All right. Are we ready for six hours of Sherlock? Oh, what the heck? It's taking longer to load than usual. There we go. That was weird. <laughs> I unmuted it and you instantly hear a frog. The first noise. All right, so we're uh, one for two as far as being correct. We had the right idea with the second one, but I guess they I guess they drowned the train, which is interesting. I feel like there would be a survivor or something if that was the case. I don't know. There's a lot. There was a lot of red herrings in that case. Um, like the whole entire mind thing apparently didn't matter. That was a red herring. Um, all the fraudulent um, uh, purchasing like invoices, uh, like contracts. Those were, that was a red herring that didn't actually lead up to anything. Uh, so I guess the Mexican group wanted to kill the Chilean group because of the mines. And the mines just so happen to have exploded to throw off their trail, or I'm I'm not sure. It was really weird. It was an interesting case. It's just there's a lot of a lot of red herrings for sure. Holmes, what happened? I feel deathly. And you look it. Let me examine you. Please don't tell me that you've returned to your old habits. Oh, we get to play as Watson again. Lucky us. All right, how's the eyes? The pupil is dilated. Bro. Mouth, schnoz, forehead. The temperature appears to be normal. I need to concentrate and count the heartbeats. Okay. I need to concentrate. A weak pulse. Around what? 50 beats per minute. Um, no. But you're dying, what? Holmes. Your pulse rate is dropping. We need to get you to the hospital wait, immediately. Wait, wait, hang on. Am I, am I doing the math wrong? The antidote. <laughs> Give it to me. Wait, did we count for six or ten you seconds? You mean that you're poisoned? No. Please. Let me count for ten seconds. Never mind. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> Don't tell me that you did this to yourself. Hemlock and the Tura. I was compelled to. Holmes, imagine if I'd not returned home when I did. What might have happened? <laughs> I knew that you would. Mr. Holmes, Inspector Lestrade is here to see you. Mr. Holmes is unable to see anyone at the moment. He is unwell. A good day, Inspector. Ah, Mr. Holmes, I'm glad to find you here. I need your help. This is a strange one. We have brought in two young bankers from the city, sons of lords, members of the chamber, and so on and so forth. They were found stranded in a rowing boat that was drifting on the Thames. A romantic escapade with an unhappy ending, Lestrade. What? Well, yes, they were both in the buff, but uh, what? The fuck is the buff? As I said. And they were tied together. You are lacking in imagination, Inspector. Well, no, I'm not. Anyway. There was a banner flapping about in the boat with the RMS Oceanic printed on it and signed by the Merry Men. The Oceanic? Isn't that the largest steamer ever built? Yes. And these two young banker chaps are sons of the owners of the White Star Line, the company that built it. They're the rumors of corruption. I'm not interested in politics, Lestrade. 
I'll keep it then. Here's another one that's a bit more complex and maybe to your liking. It's a murder, but we're unable to find any weapon. We haven't touched anything. It's at the Roman Baths in Strand Lane. A murder, a vanishing weapon, the Roman Baths. That's for us. Watson, fetch your hat. Oh, well, was... Was Sherlock, like, transparent for a second, or is that just me? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately I was wrong with the other one, though. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah, only 22% only of people did it I, the way I did it. But the people who did it the way I did made the same moral choice more often than not. I get rid of all these exclamation points. It's gonna piss me off. <laughs> okay. I'm always wondering what's on your mind, Holmes. Okay. <laughs> Alright, book, come on, you can load in. You can do it, book. Let's do it. Come on. There you go. of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe is still in the steam room. It has not been touched, per your usual instructions, Mr. Holmes. I shall be waiting for you here, but please hurry. Are you able to identify the men who are with the victim in the steam room? Yes. The manager of the bath, Sir Gregory Pitkin, a lad from the city council, Garrow, and an archaeologist by the name of Blinkhorn. I think the plump one, Garrow, did it. He doesn't seem right in the head. Well, we shall see. You found no murder weapon? No, and that's why I called you. All three witnesses and the victim were locked in when the murder occurred, and they remained so until we got here. We even had to pick the lock to enter. I see. It's weird. Was there anyone else here, apart from those gentlemen in the steam room? Yes, a Mr. Phillips. He was the one who called the police. He will be able to give you more details. It was Phillips. I like this place. It's cool. The sets are really nice in this game. Brigadarium? Are the steam rooms on the other side, Mr. Holmes? Of course. Sudatorium? Huh. Birdies. I think floor. Holy crap. Okay. Good lord, Holmes. Ah, death with a peculiarly Roman piquancy. Like the one you almost had an hour ago. And let us forget about that. All right. Um There was only one hit from the weapon. It pierced the right eye straight through to the brain. Death would have been instantaneous. Hang on. My phone did a ring. Look, there's a ring finger. He was wearing a ring. He very likely removed it before the steam session. That's something you do? Well, death is very recent. Between 30 minutes to one hour ago. 
Some dirt or earth. I'll take a sample. Hmm. The wound should not have bled so profusely. This pool is rather large. Really? I think we have found all that we can here, taking into consideration the abysmal lighting. Constable, we have finished with the body. We don't have many leads here. Whoa, what, what happened to the audio? Me is that we still have to find the murder weapon. Mr. Holmes? Please have the body removed without disturbing anything else in the room. All right, Mr. Holmes. I was wondering, Holmes, it's fairly reckless to carry out a murder inside a closed chamber. Why do you suppose they did it? There are a great many possibilities. The murderer was in a hurry. Or he is an artist. Or a ghost. Or he wanted to ensure that I'd be brought in on the case. Probably the latter. You are ridiculous. Do you know that? You know Watson wants to go down on this this old Sherlock. Every one of you looks incredibly trustworthy. It's I like horrible. it. It's horrible. So Rodney is dead. Can't we speak about it somewhere else? His glasses. One lens is cracked, probably due to the temperature of the brazier. These lenses are for myopia. The wearer is short sighted. The brazier is still burning. The heat here is extreme. It is too hot. I cannot reach into it. I will need something to pick up this melted metal. Blood traces wiped on the towel. Huh. I'm in shock. I don't want to talk. That's the one that uh the in uh, the inspector said he thinks did it, right? Yeah, I mean he's the he's the only one with a with a, with a gut, I it's guess. Horrible. I can't talk at the moment. Hey. I should check this blood sample at Baker Street. What's that? This key was covered in blood. I should ask Phillips about it. With the steam on, I'm unable to see even a few feet away. Oh, is it really this? Okay. Did it really get that steamy? Hey, you can't see anything in here. This view is giving me a headache, too. Okay. What should we do next, Holmes? The Baker Street. Actually close. These clothes belong to one of the suspects from the steam room. Clothes belonging to one of the suspects. Expensive clothes belonging to one of the men from the steam room. Okay. Come on. Champagne for a special occasion. Unopened. It was intended to be enjoyed after the steam session. An ice bucket to keep the champagne chilled. Wait, could I look at the, um, 
the brand of the Steam of the Steam Switch. G. Newell and Sons, Steam Specialists, Seattle, WA. I've never been in a steam room before. I don't really see the appeal. Mr. Holmes, I should like to take the suspects to the yard. You can interrogate them there. Any objections? None, Lestrade. Yeah. Good day to you, Mr. Phillips. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my colleague, Dr. Watson. Would you be so kind as to answer our questions? Certainly, sir. Certainly, sir. Please tell us the chain of events from the start of your day. Everything that you can remember. The slightest detail may be of importance. Very well, sir. I came in at 6.30 this morning, and I opened the baths. I made sure that the room was clean, and I prepared the towels. The brazier was still burning. There was a fire burning all night. Yes, Sir Gregory ordered me to light the brazier yesterday. It takes some time until the room is fully heated. The gentleman had a meeting at nine o'clock this morning. They wanted everything to be perfect. They'd been in the steam room for 20 minutes when I suddenly heard shouting. I ran to the door, but it was closed. I couldn't open it. So I ran out to the street to call for the police. One constable came up, and then there were others, and they picked the lock. Then Inspector Lestrade came along, and he told us that nothing should be touched. So I'm guessing the murder weapon was melted in the brazier then. Hmm. Did you receive any other visitors this morning? No one. Until these gentlemen arrived. Sir Gregory was the first. And then, while we were discussing work details, Sir Rodney and Mr. Blinkhorn arrived. And Mr. Garrow followed. And what happened after that? I waited until they'd all entered the steam room. Then I returned to the hall. The changing room door was open, so I should hear if they needed anything. You would have heard if someone had entered or left the steam room? Certainly, sir. These doors make a lot of noise. All right, fashion police time. I forgot what fastidious means. people have keys to the steam room we have just the one key for now which sir gregory gave to me so this morning you opened the steam room and then i put the key inside my desk but when they called i couldn't find it it had disappeared i i, I don't know where it is did you leave the baths at any time or receive any visitors no sir i did not oh yeah Oh, yeah? Then how about this? Did you leave the baths at any time? No, sir. I did not. Oh, yeah? Then how about this? You are not telling the truth, Mr. Phillips. You left your work this morning, and you went to the post office, where you dispatched a telegram at around 7.30. But how could you... No, I... The telegram was for someone in Manchester. Mr. Holmes, it's important. I'll tell you everything. I left the baths at 7.20. My sister wrote to me yesterday, and she needed a reply, or our mother is unwell. I was away for 20 minutes, and I closed the baths on my way out. Did you receive a reply from your sister? No, she wasn't meant to. I just told her to pawn my old school uniform so that she could pay for the medication. Did you check to see if the key was still in your desk when you returned? No, I didn't. Please, Mr. Holmes, don't tell the police about this. Sir Gregory would give me the sack. I need this job. And no one wants Gregory's sack. 
It's a terrible reality. There is a bottle of champagne on ice in the changing room. Do you have any idea who left it there? There is? Are you quite certain? I didn't pay any attention. Do you believe that it's important? <sighs> Alright, we need to check out that blood sample, though. I mean, oh my, what the fuck? <laughs> What's this? This area serves as Sir Rodney Bedcliffe's workshop. Holy crap, okay. This metal plate, besides its archaeological interest, appears to be a part of something larger. At the present moment, I am unable to determine exactly what that might be. It looks like the part of a shield or something, but I guess not. I could be I could just be stupid. It's not easy. No, it's definitely not a shield. A shape has been cut in the plate. What should be done with it? I guess we'll just pocket that. Archaeological findings. Old clay pots with numbers inscribed upon them. Tools used by archaeologists in their research. I will need these tongs. Mm. Dear friend, I wish to organize a press conference at the Strand Light Lane Baths next month. 1893 was a remarkable year for my work in Egypt, but now it is time to set my focus upon English archaeology to shine. To shine, sorry, to shine the light on our national treasures and reveal them to the public. I would like to see as many journalists as possible in attendance to record this event and record it favorably if we treat them well enough. I should like to recall my old friendship with Lord Blackmore and use the special funds of the Royal Archaeological Institute for this event, Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. There are a few among us who could claim any degree of unfamiliarity with the name Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. He is a gentleman who possesses the wealth, notoriety, and vigor to well match the finest of his ilk abound in England. His intellect is equal to his charms, as has oft been declared by the young ladies of the European aristocracy. He holds powerful connections within the Lord's Chamber and carries an influence inside the political world. There are those who would call him unforgiving, authoritarian. We should, we should rather say that Sir Rani is determined and ambitious. His presence at any archaeological site can only mean success for all concerned. Okay. Miraculous reopenings for the Strand Lane Rombu, Rom, Rombu, Roman Baths excavation research. The research effort were about to be halt were about to be halted when a savior arrived in the form of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Sir Rodney has taken over immediate control of the ev ev of the excavation, claiming that the site holds the key to a great mystery. We pledge to update our readers with all the exciting news as it develops. Archaeological findings. Old clay pots with numbers inscribed upon them. Glass plate negatives. A remarkable method for recording ancient civilizations. A glass plate negative is missing. It is a glass plate negative of an Egyptian statue. Okay. Could have happened. 
Yes, it is somewhat treacherous. <clears throat> Fortunately, I am unscathed. To where does this corridor lead? To the Frigidarium, the call room. Barely unscathed and by a very small margin. And treacherous is an understatement. Hmm, suspicious timing. Those stones weigh tons. We won't move them. It does not matter. If our investigation requires it, we shall ask for them to be removed. Yeah, that's how this works. Come on, Watson, have a backbone. All right, let's grab this thing. Oh. I has now. I should analyze this melted metal. <laughs> Your demon lord has arrived. Where's your god now? <laughs> Let's analyze some of this stuff. <laughs> well, I tried. Hey, pupper. On the sofa for the third time today. Well, don't be surprised if Watson sits on you again. All right. Selenite. Pyrite, otherwise known as fool's gold. Why is there fool's gold on him? White clay particles. Interesting. According to the color and its composition, I deduce that this sample is white clay. Now, I need to find which area near London this sample belongs to. All right. White London, well, right there. The sample of dirt belongs to the White London Clay region, located near the city of St. Albans. What a strange deduction. Let us analyze this blood sample. This blood has not coagulated well. It seems very liquid. That is strange. Let us see what is inside it. Hydrogen peroxide will bring any foreign matter to the surface. I must take a pipette and place several drops of hydrogen peroxide. Oh, what peroxide. the fuck did you just say? A pipette? It's pipette. A pipette. Wow. What a fucking goober move. Water. This blood is heavily diluted with water. Huh. This is a piece of metal taken from a brazier. It appears to be silver, but I need Fucking to be sure. Perpet. If it is silver, it will be possible to melt it, since silver's melting point is at around 900 degrees Celsius. Let us compare this sample with a silver penny by testing it with acid. If it changes color to match the result of a reaction with a silver coin, then it is silver. Okay, fair enough. Uh, sorry, I need, I, need a, I need to grab a pipette. The reaction is the same red stain. It is silver. Britannia silver quality. A pipe. 
Pretty. <laughs> Oh, I like this painting. The grotesque murder of the former Captain Peter Carey, known in private as Black Peter, has been resolved. The evidence that Scotland Yard received from the trustworthy source was more than sufficient to conclude that the murderer of Peter Carey was Patrick Kearns, one of Carey's former harpooners. In fact, the dangerous criminal was caught single-handedly by the brave Inspector Lestrade in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. Patrick Kearns is now sentenced to death. Well, we just fucking murdered him. Cool. This I is where it. I keep my post. Maybe a little bit drastic, but okay. It wasn't drastic enough. Um... Yeah. What should we do next, Holmes? Why do I always look through there expecting something nice? I always regret it. <laughs> Sir Bentcliffe. 1893 is a remarkable year. Oh, we probably... History. That is not the one I... That is not the one I need. That sounds kind of silly, but whatever. Research, perhaps, or in archaeology. Well, maybe I guess we go to eighteen ninety-three. Bentcliffe's mummy. Yeah, it's it's. I'm surprised they don't make that they don't make as many um, non-linear uh, detective games. Probably probably mummy or mummy or or mama or or mommy probably mommy. The great excavation in Aswan has taken over three years. Sir Rodney Bentcliffe directed the archaeological work. A mummy was found with an... inoculated? An inoculated? eye and posed in an unusual position. The right hand was tensed as if reaching out for something or to someone. The mummy was burned upright. Buried upright. She was, she's been named the Desperate Mummy due to her very peculiar characteristics. Nearby could be, could be read in Latin, by the eye he was punished for he saw what he was, that he was not worthy. The mummy is believed to be Roman rather than Egyptian, as some symbols found in the tomb are in common with Mithraic mysteries. Here it is. By the eye he was punished, for he saw that he was not worthy. Yeah, it's dreadful. That's not a real. That's not a real uh, remaster. <laughs> I'm always wondering what's on your mind, Holmes. All right, I guess we interrogate.
Yeah. Did you see my little plan titles tab in the about section? I'm pretty proud of that. Those aren't in order or anything. They're just things I plan on playing. An embroidered silk handkerchief. A fountain pen with solid gold trim. Sir Gregory Pitkin's visiting card. Even has a watermark. That subtle off-white coloring. Oh my god. When Garrow found Sir Rodney dead, he wiped the blood upon himself. Is that how they spell vile in in like British English? Vile? A file with herbs. Do you know what it is, my dear fellow? It's the St. John's wort flower, Holmes. It's commonly used as a drug against melancholia. However, an overdosage might lead to a rash or even hallucinations. Like, British English, it's so funny how, like, 95 to 99% of the time, British English is indecipherable to, from American English. But it's, it's like, it's just off enough <laughs> to where you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Sir Gregory Pitkin Manager to Mr. Blinkhorn. That's an unfortunate name. Dear sir, the interests that I represent require the situation at the baths to be changed for the better. At the present time, the frigidarium excavations remain under your direction, and yet the works have not progressed. You have failed to find anything of value, and we are unable to make the frigidarium accessible to the public. The frigidarium is a valuable asset in the recreation of the Roman bath experience. I urge you to complete your work within the next two months. You have this remaining time to conclude your archaeological research and to find yourself another workplace. An ordinary pencil. Is it though? Rodney Bentcliffe's notebook. It may contain something of interest. The last pages were torn out. We must find a way of retrieving Sir Rodney's last lines. Watson, please prevent anyone from entering the room. But first, fetch me a pencil. To begin with, a few strokes of the pencil will be enough. I don't want to damage the traces. Day. Then to gently smudge the leftover pencil marks with a handkerchief. I'm sure that Watson won't mind if I use his. Yeah, I almost found it. This date will go something in history. Mr. Holmes, the coroner. But what are you doing? Tampering with the evidence. Who the fuck I are you? I prefer to make them talk. Today, I almost found it. This date will go down in history. Sir Rodney was about to make an outstanding discovery. Wonderful. I could retrieve only the final words. The rest of it is lost. Perhaps the autopsy will assist us in that matter. I'm not sure that I can allow you to inspect the body now. I am sure that you must, Constable. Well... <laughs> Sir Rodney Vencliff, age 63. The right eyeball has been burst, piercing to the hilt by a curved bladed knife. The blade cut through the orbit of the frontal bone. 
ripping a part of the frontal lobe and the corpus chiosum, after which completing its trajectory to the cerebellum caused a hemor hemorrhagic lesion. That sounds horrible. <laughs> All of these injuries led directly to the death of the individual. At the upper lobe of the left lung, there is an old injury filled with an amount of mucus and ciliated debris that may correspond to a chronic infection by elements likely inhaled in a burial chamber, a decaying mummy for example, or a dried and decomposing food product intended to accompany the deceased in their grave. The remainder of the body does not appear to have been damaged. So I don't say the so right eyeball was burst, pierced by the so it pierced the by to the hilt by a curved blade. Come through the frontal bone, ripping part of the frontal lobe. What so it was like stabbed like in his eye, and then as since it was curved, it stabbed upward into the brain. Your cerebellum is the frontal part of your brain, I think, if I remember correctly from psych class. Fuck, that sounds horrible. A hand drawn map. An old and rather dirty coin. You dirty coin. This ring was most likely the one that Sir Rodney wore. He removed it before entering the steam room. That's probably why they made him a robot. An Egyptian symbol. It is a very old jewel. It's welded. Well, whatever the fuck they, you would call it for an ancient weld. An Egyptian symbol. I see the join. This ring was repaired and quite badly too, with silver. Why on earth would they wear such a ring? A very pertinent question. Yeah, it's so wild too because I mean like most of the deaths in Danganronpa aren't that aren't that, you know, gruesome in, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Like all of the deaths in uh in three are just kind of meh. According to the coroner, there were no cardiac problems nor lung congestion, but there were traces of fungus, possibly contracted from the Egyptian tombs. I think like the next worst one is probably like Chihiro, right? I forgot. Ch is it Chihiro? The coroner observed no stomach nor liver disease, if we're to accept that Sir Rodney was an occasional drinker and 63 years of age. An Look at this fucking wound. Inflicted by a curved knife, which resulted in instant death, as the coroner's report says. Nice ass. The bruising is in line. All right, can we? There's nothing else to look at, right? Some light bruising caused by a rope. They were caused by a rope around the waist. Sir Rodney was descending somewhere. I can get banned. This guy's made out of fucking Play-Doh, dude. I always wonder what's on your mind, Holmes. What should we do next? Never mind. That's not what he said. All right, let's go fucking airgate. Um, the presence of water is due to the humid atmosphere caused by the steam. The presence of water is the bl the blood is an unexplained clue. It must be somehow linked to the murder process. Is 
Alrighty. Who wants to go first? Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Good day to you, sir. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and I am assisting the police with their investigation of the far right, of the I think. of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Not at all, Mr. Holmes. Uh, my name is Percival Blinkhorn. I trust this man. He seems like a reliable human being. Like, I would lend him a lawnmower for sure. And it would get back before he was even done. Not wealthy. Rusty bracers. Is he married or not? It's the most important thing ever. Never mind. <laughs> not what he was looking for. What is your occupation? I'm an archaeologist, specializing in the Roman period. I'm working on several excavation sites at present, including the baths at Strand Lane. Hmm. Can you tell me more about the baths? Well, we're hoping to retrieve a great many interesting artifacts from the site, and to list any items of value before their eventual restoration and exhibition. And has it been successful? It has, thanks to Sir Rodney. This guy would look so much better if he just got rid of all the top, right? And just had a beard with a bald head. He would look so much better. What was your relationship? Embrace the balding and just get rid of well, all of it. I couldn't say that he was a kind man. He's got a head shape that works. But he was talented. I felt a great admiration for him, I, I must say. Was it your first collaboration? I had met Sir Rodney briefly once in Egypt, and I'd shared my researches with him. Surprisingly, my work did convince him to come here. He arrived only a couple of months ago. Surprisingly? Well, Sir Rodney is, uh, was, oh God, a cold man, and so very secretive, too. But I learned so much from him. I can't believe that he's dead. I trust this man. Can you tell me what you saw today? Well, we entered the steam room, and we all went to sit down. Uh, the steam was particularly dense, and I didn't see anything much further after that. I just heard Mr. Garrow shouting, but we all ran for the door and bumped into each other. I was very alarmed by this point. What did you do? Well, the door was stuck, and with all the steam, it, it was quite frightening. I was barely able to see my own feet. Garrow was covered in blood. Do you believe that Garrow killed Sir Rodney? Oh, no. Uh, Garrow couldn't harm a fly. He's also not projecting blame to someone else. Can you recall any recent event that would occur to you now as being a little strange? Well, yesterday we had a small argument. Is that all? No. Sir Rodney informed me that he was to attend the London Archaeological Congress with me. Then he advised me of quite the opposite. And rather aggressively, too. Do you recognize this ring? Uh, certainly. It's the famous Aswan ring. So sorry, it's Aswan. I spelled, I pronounced it wrong. I'm sorry. And a fucking fraud. Himself. Sir Rodney has uh, had his own particular ideas of archaeology. Mm. What can you tell me about Garrow? Well, he always looks so sad. And um, he has been acting strangely lately. He complains about voices and visions. I swan. will keep an eye on him because I'm worried. How well were your you trust this guy, right? I do. Before Sir Rodney's arrival, rather well. Yeah, well, how about that fucking letter? This letter reveals that Sir Gregory was prepared to put a stop. I got an achievement that. called it oh, "I Never Fail." Yes, but. Since Sir Rodney's arrival, he had calmed down. He allowed us to work. Uh, I'm not sure what they agreed on. Hmm. What will happen now that Sir Rodney is dead? Well, I haven't thought about that. Uh, but if it's needed, I will fight to defend Sir Rodney's expectations. 
We discovered some melted silver in the brazier. Did you put it there? No. Silver, you say? No, I don't know how it got there. If that silver is the murder weapon, it's kind of weird it would melt like that. Did you place the bottle of champagne in the changing room? No, I did not. I was clear. Okay. Please Your turn. Escort this suspect for All right, Mr. Pickman. Good day to you, Sir Gregory. My name is Sherlock Holmes. Oh, great. This guy looks I'm like a fucking douchebag. Investigation of the murder that took place this morning. Would you mind answering a few questions? Tell me, Mr. Holmes, will I need to stay here for very much longer? Well, it all depends on how fucking helpful you are. Old chain, cashmere waistcoat, man of wealth. Signet ring, aristocratic roots. That fucking outfit, dude, it's so gaudy. Arrogant look. Mouth shape, disdain. You are the manager of the baths, is that correct? Yes. I'm passionate about archaeology. I wanted to restore the ruins. My ambition is to open the baths to the public. Living archaeology can be a profitable business. Although now I'm not so sure. I see. When do you wish to begin using the baths? When the archaeological researches are over, I will be free to complete the restoration. It is the usual process. Okay, so, hang on. Is this a Roman bath that was in Britain that that was excavated and then turned into like a and like like renovated back into a public bath again since the Roman Empire or did they have Roman style baths in Britain like I know that Rome was in Britain a little bit but not like a shit ton right so I'm kind of confused. What was your relationship with Sir Rodney Bentcliffe? We were not particularly close. He had an unpleasant temperament. Suspicious. Authoritarian. Unkind. People possessed by genius may be forgiven for their nature, but not by me. Was he obstructive? Not at all. Everything he did led us to greater success. He helped us increase the potential of the building. Please tell me what happened this morning. The test that we performed this morning was a success. The steam was working well. But then, of course, that awful murder. What did you see? The steam was too thick to see anything. But ask Garrow. He saw the body first. Okay. Had Sir Rodney exhibited any recent strange behavior? Look, I'm not a suspicious fellow, but I think that he had professional interests elsewhere that he did not wish us to know about. Why should you think that? Where? I have no idea. But after all, it was not my business. How was the work progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather slowly, I would say. Sir Gregory, could you please explain this letter? You expressed the wish to call off the research work at the baths. It was all about Blinkhorn. He was merrily digging away and taking very little care about it, ruining everything and finding nothing of any value. But the arrival of Sir Rodney changed your mind? Sir Rodney's work was extremely promising, and it was good for the bar's publicity. So yes, I changed my mind. So it's not in his benefit that Rodney's dead now. I mean, it doesn't absolve a motive, but it makes it harder, right? Are you aware that Mr. Garrow is under a form of medication? Garrow? No. But I never liked that parasite. Do you believe him to be capable of murder? Well, he did have blood on him. Does that make him a murderer? 
Some melted silver was found inside the steam room brazier. Do you know where it came from? Silver? No. Every answer to that question has been very short. Did you bring a bottle of champagne to the baths? Absolutely not. So Rodney did, I think. Okay. Well, um... Fire Blinkhorn in order to stop the excavation on the rope and vessel. He might open them. Put okay. Oh, here we go. Blinkhorn's work was saved by the arrival of Sir Rodney, but at high cost to his morale. Blinkhorn's work was saved by the arrival of Sir Rodney. He was thankful for the possibility of their working together and the chance of learning from him. We'll keep it at this, just because he, just because Blinkhorn doesn't seem to be resentful at all. Like it kind of seems like he took the leadership role, I guess. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. A good day to you. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Ah, uh, uh, I am Tristram Garrow. Alright, what's critique? Sleep well. Take care of himself. He's fucking falling apart already. Got dirty clothes. Got a flat cock. Protective amulet. What is your occupation? I, I am a counselor at the uh, district chamber. And what were you doing at the baths? Well, I, I follow the researches. I am... Uh... I interested in, in archaeology. You follow them? Yes. So many things happened and w we need to know. Or perhaps it's better hidden. I beg your pardon, Mr. Garrow. I, uh, I, I meant nothing, but by that I, I apologize. What was it like to work with Sir Rodney? It was like uh, working w with a genius. He was a hard man, but then you, you know this world is hard. There are always people who want to steal from you. And he, uh, he, he trusted me, but, uh, oh. Are you feeling unwell? Oh, I'm sorry. He is I. Oh, I remember. Oh, I, I feel so sorry. Do you need anything? I, uh, I, I, I feel bad. I, um, I, I hear... No, nothing. I, 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 I'm better now. Please try to recall what you saw today. The room was so... So hot, uh, I had to remove my glasses. I was not feeling so very well I in there. But you found the body. I saw the knife, you know. Flying through the air, I, I, I saw the blood. I tried to escape, I, I don't remember. You saw the knife? What did it look like? Everything was as if I in a nightmare. It all happened so fast. The knife was, was shining like, like gold. Had Sir Rodney exhibited any recent strange behavior? Well, he, he had been rather secretive these past few days. Last Thursday, for, for example, I, I saw him leave. When he returned, it, it was very late. He showed me some wet coins, Roman coins, and uh, he, he started to laugh. At the sneeze. His ring! Oh, it should be destroyed. Why do you say that? It is a cursed ring. Digging dark secrets. Really? I... Uh, it is after me now. I know it. Uh, I shouldn't have worked on it in the workshop. It's too late now. This is the coin that, that he showed me. It is from the third century. It must be very rare. No, I... I, I, I don't know. 
Thank you. Thank you. This will help me to calm down. Do be careful with the dosage. I, I will. I mean it. We discovered some melted silver in the brazier. Did you put it there? It didn't help. The power is too strong. Did you place the bottle of champagne in the changing room? What? No. I don't understand what's so important about the Darryl champagne. appears to be rather mentally disturbed. Either that or he is a good actor. Okay, well... lying to everyone about his work. He was working alone and secretly. Why would Sir Ronnie be hiding anything? Could his discovery be the motive for the crime? So there's no more connections. Sorry. Find out where Sir Ronnie has was several days before his murder and uncover his precious secret. Alright, so we have Alan Phillips is from Manchester. He takes care of both himself and the establishment where he works. And he is seen as a good employee. He went out this morning to send a telegram, probably to his hometown. You have Percival Blinkhorn, is a true archaeologist who lives and breathes his work. He has remained in his profession for 15 or 20 years and seems to enjoy it. Gregory Pitkin is a model of the upper class citizen. He is rich in a well respected position and he considers this his birthright. Whether he may have done Whatever he may have done, he certainly does not believe that he should be in prison for it. You have Tristram Arrow. is a in his early thirties. He suffers from my, myopia. The fuck is that? Hey Google, what's myopia? What a fucking roundabout way to say he's nearsighted. He seems very disturbed, which is possibly due to the shock of the murder, but not from that alone, as he is unshaven and clad in old, dirty clothes. Can't do anything. There we go. Ah. My archive. I oh, can always consult wait, so what do we need it? This table? Or is it the map? There we go. Now we have two maps. We must combine them properly. Okay. It looks like a body of water. 
Um, let's see. Oh, we can move around. Okay, I'm looking for water, I think. There it is. Watson, pack your bag. We are visiting a location in St. Albans marked on Sir Rodney's map. Going on a trip, boys. I have to get coffee again. Site is closed until further notice. All right, I'm gonna grab a. a what the fuck was that noise? I'm gonna grab some more coffee. It, it, actually, I might have to heat it up first. So I'll just be back and press the button on my coffee maker. <laughs> Got to make my bed. Oh yeah, by the way, check out this shirt. Right? It's, it's a, uh, it's Pontiff from Dark Souls 3. I can finally wear the shirt because it fits me now. I finally, finally lost enough weight for it. Which is cool. I'm a whole size down from what I usually wear. Fuck. Yeah, I've got one. Like I got, I got. This one, Dark Souls three one. I have a I have a Hollow Knight one that I bought. That's the same size and a and a near Automata one. And I can wear all of them now, which feels good. All right, sorry. I'm always wondering what's on your mind, Holmes. I know my life isn't that interesting. This, this archaeological site has been abandoned. Why did Bentcliff come here? Uh, well, let's just let ourselves in. I can examine the door. The door has been left open. Someone did not care. Or was in haste. Okay. The knife used by Mithras for the sacrifice of the bull is originally a curved sacrificial blade of Persian origin. Its curve can be from 5 to 15 degrees. The name is derived from the Persian Shamshir which means sword. This radically curved sword family includes the Shamshir, the Scimitar, 
the Talwar, the Kiliji, uh, K Kilij, the Kilij, Polwar, and Mongol Saber. A myth of the Golden Knife is the key to the Mithraic mysteries that some describe as an, as an equivalent to the Holy Grail. The Golden Knife carries a curse that will spill the blood of the unworthy who dare to touch it. The cult of Mithras was a mysterious religion practiced within the Roman Empire from around the 1st to 4th century AD. The name of the Persian god Mithra, adapted by the Greek as Mithras, was linked with a new and distinctive imagery. Worshippers of Mithras had a complex system of seven grades of initiation with ritualistic meals. Initiates would, would meet in the underground temples called Mithraea that were retained in large numbers. The iconic scenes of Mithra show him as shown being born from a rock and slaughtering a bull. A lot of shit. And the empty coconut oh hang on. and the empty coconuts they used to imitate the sound of horses hooves, another strange ritual for the old gods, to keep the spirits away. The people feeling the people feeling that the dark eye was upon them would melt their valuables in the fire. Sub Saharan tribes burned fruits, and the rich Roman family spared no expense, melting silver or tin. It is not recorded if such valuable offerings were thrown away with the ashes or if they were reused at a later date. Alright, we don't have the full story there. Something about coconuts. This is the map of the site. We are at the heart of an old Roman city. In Britain. Yeah. Followers of Mithras were, con were covert worship, were, were covert worshiping more conventional deities such as Juno or Neptune in their everyday lives. The Mithras temp Mithras temples were usually found below the temples of other gods. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Mithras followers are often referred to their traditional deities to gain passage to Mithraeum. The example of Mithraeum of Dio. Hola, Dio da. In France is interesting as the entrance was located beneath a carved statue of Diana. This entrance was possibly revealed by a clever stone or rope mechanism which may have never been which may never have been discovered if the water infiltration had not destroyed the mechanism opening the way down to the Mithraeum. Both Mithraic temples can be found in Rome, Ostia, New 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 Numibia, Numidia, uh, Dalmatia, Britain, and along the Rhine Danube frontier, while being somewhat less common in Greece, Egypt, and Syria. Hmm. Yes. Gets everything in here. I've rubbed my dick against everything, so yeah. Every game I play, there's just fucking reading. <laughs> the Cyclops, a one-eyed creature helping Vulcan at the forge. Vulcan, the god of fire and metalworking. This must be Hephaestus. On an unrelated note, Hephaestus was the original cuckold. Did you know that? Construction hooks. True story.
Neptune, the god of the sea. Minerva. It is a statue of Minerva. Is Minerva Hera? I know I know the gods better by their Greek names than their Roman names. I'm not very good with Roman names for gods. I blame Percy Jackson. So who's Minerva? Is it Athena? Excavating tools, a bucket, shovel, and brush. I'm trying to think of like influential female gods and like big ones are Hera and Athena. Aphrodite is Venus. I don't need the ropes for now. Ah, oh, well, we will need the ropes. It is Athena Sweet. Was Hephaestus Vulcan? What's Hephaestus Roman name? This wall was covered with mud recently. What could be hidden here? Yo, can we get that in r slash oddly satisfying? Frigidarium. It is located at the Roman Baths in London. Someone took the time to hide the fresco, but what for? I need to visit this place. Yeah, I like a lot of the um the environments. They'll have unique amp like ambient noise too. Pretty cool. Like you don't hear certain bird calls when you're here. Like you can kind of hear like a red winged blackbird when you're when you were at the rails because you were near um, a swamp. But here you kind of hear more like critters. Frogs. You, Lord Blackmore. Yeah, exactly. Manager of the baths, Sir Gregory Pitkin, it was quite a nu nuisance at the start when I arrived. After you stepped in, he became rather more helpful. Occasionally, people of his rank are not well suited to, the, to a work of such great magnitude. They lack the necessary vision. In a few weeks' time, I hope to bring good news of the Strand Lane Baths. I am on the verge of discovering a major archaeological artifact, one that might be used politically by your party to demonstrate the strength of our ancestors and fulfill the need to protect our empire from any present and future threats. Kind regards, Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Calvin and Hobbes. 
Kelvin, Hobbs and you just consider yourselves as being so smart and funny. I had a good laugh when you froze Miss Durkin's notes about the arc of Hadrian in the on, in the ice. However, our thesis exams are just ahead, and as you are the so-called brain of your improbable duo, I have to warn you that my gastrolophis model, the ancient Greek crossbow, and not the medical device to relieve constipated people, as you might have thought, is not to be touched, or else I'll have to inform Mr. Wormwood about everything you've done these past two years. P.S. I ate Hobbs' tuna sandwich. S. Spittle. That's the real fucking crime right there. He ate someone's sandwich. Hickman feels rather uncomfortable uh, postponing the public opening of the Roman baths because of Sir Rodney. He was angry because of this. Hickman expects to receive much value from Sir Rodney's research. The work will increase the baths' renowned popularity. I believe that. This is t this is interesting though. Like they aren't like. I, I don't know. Like it's something interesting about them. They aren't. None of them feel like remotely this traditional. Is a <laughs> like of an ancient Greek crossbow. This is a re dismounted device. I mean disassembled. The gastrofets were used with ropes and hooks for sieges. Now can I do this? This is a re Oh yeah. This is the map of the site. We are at the heart of an old Roman city. The gastrofets were used with ropes and hooks for sieges. The hell, you got a whirlpool going on over here, guys. I think your water might be a little bit fucky wucky around here. It's not. It's not how water works. It is a broken statue of a bull. Bull. Construction hooks. Uh, maybe we, now we can get permission to have them clean out. <laughs> oh no! I think maybe now we can get the 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 frigidarium like cleaned out. Now that we have evidence that there might be something important over there. Mr. Holmes, we've cleared the corridor to the Frigidarium. You can visit it now. Yeah, there Thank we go. You, Mr. Phillips. Thank you, Ms. Zor Philly.
What the fuck? Perhaps I could find some clues by activating the flagstones. Oh, there's something right here. A hidden sign. Ouch. <laughs> and he makes a million dollars per stream. Hidden symbol. A symbol. Now I have all the clues to help me find where these symbols are leading. All I need is imagination. Oh God. That's annoying. <laughs> the signs are pointing to this bust. I knew that door looked suspicious. Is this not the door that opened? Oh, I guess it was the door over here. Jesus, hi Watson. I'm unsure, Watson, but everything points to the fact that it was the last place visited by Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. We are approaching the end of this mystery. Mm, yes, ground. Broken glass plate. What is it doing here? I should examine it at Baker Street. Oh, very peculiar. An ice maker. Why would Sir Rodney have brought such a device here? <laughs> mm. 
Mithras, the god, clothed in Anatolian costume and wearing a Phrygian cap, killing the bull. The hell's Mithras? Mithras. Mithras. This fresco resembles either a ladder or a hierarchy. Initiation grades of the cult of Mithras. Mithras, I guess. This fresco. Yeah, what the hell? Is that your support beam? Yeah, it's a. Uh... I forgot what it looked like, but yeah, it is. Damn. The fire casts a shadow upon the floor. Hey, that's the shield. No, well, never mind, it's not. I lied. Mummified bodies. Fuck. I lied, to, I lied to all of you. <laughs> oh, man, you're so fucking gullible. Pillar collapsed a long time ago. Well, obviously, the thing has to go there. How are we installing this? Is your mind just that strong? <laughs> it resembles a bull. That is the symbol of Neptune, the god of the sea. Yo, Ohio, who's your favorite Greek god? This shadow seems to represent a bridge. It is very similar to the face of Mithras. The shadows show us the way to go. We will find Mithras after Neptune, the bull, and the bridge. Neptune, the bull, the bridge. A shovel. Not from the Roman era. Mummified bodies. We're in some type of catacomb. The catacomb. What the fuck? Mummified bodies. We're in some type of catacomb. It's the catacomb. Mummified bodies. We're in some type of catacomb. Welcome to the catacomb, baby. Alright, let's press the buttons, I guess. In the proper order. I'm guessing. Wait, no? Oh. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I thought the buttons were a thing. This is some type of catacomb. Catacomber. Salt. A sack of crude salt. That was it? I'm done? Okay. All I did was miss salt, apparently. So if they say, if he says catacomb, that must mean whenever he's talking about, like, his hair comb, he calls it his hair comb. Because they're spelled the same way. Artemis is cool. Isn't Artemis the one that's, like, the huntress? These baths are becoming sinister.
Oh, come on, you loaded, you loaded the book just fine, and that does <laughs> There are 12 pieces here. Let's oh try boy. to get out of them. They do that stupid fucking thing, I guess. What the fuck am I doing? It's normal. Totally. Nothing weird about, you know, lusting after God. <laughs> it's only natural, honestly. I would think you're weird if you didn't. This is so weird. Oh my god. Dude, this one looks tough. Alright, now that they're all in the right plane... Cool, that's all set. That's all set.
Oops. Fuck. Fuck. That should be it. Wait. Fucking ow. Is it good now? It there is you mold, go. And it is ready for casting. <laughs> the mold is prepared for casting. We just need to fill it with certain material. Is this is how we make the blade. Has made a reconstruction of the mythical golden knife. He seemed unafraid of maledictions, and yet half a glass of water should be enough to create a plaster solution. See what we have here. I uh, give it a minute. This knife is very similar to that described by the coroner as the weapon that killed Sir Rodney. You should not leap to any hasty conclusions, Watson. Uh, this was the missing negative. Watson, could you please use this negative and your photographic equipment to process the photograph? Thank you, Watson. Very now clear. Thank you, Watson. Reagents to develop the photograph. <sighs> Say that word again, I swear to God. Reagent. I want to fucking die every time I hear him say it. Another archaeologist, most probably. Ice cream. Ice cream in the desert. We are indebted to the Romans who developed the technique. Ice cream in the desert? <laughs> we are indebted to the Romans who developed the technique. God, I forgot how fucking big the Roman Empire was. <laughs> the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. Ice. 
Ice. Ice. Ice. Baby. Ice. Ice. Baby. Salt. Ice cream. Ice. Ice. Ice cream. Yeah, dude, it's fucking huge. Like, what is the is 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 it the biggest empire of all time, or is that, or is that the Mongols, or was that the British Empire? I don't know. Sir Rodney. So that's it. Salt and crushed ice may help to create ice cream. We solved it, guys. <laughs> What? <laughs> Am I supposed to have a revelation here? Mold was used to create the murder weapon. Yeah, that's probably accurate. Mold was used to create the murder. Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone was experimenting with Roman method of ice production. That sounds true. Check if we can create a silver knife with the materials found. Check if an ice knife can be created with the materials found. I had a feeling it was going to be like an icicle situation. Try to shape an ice weapon. If I wish to shape the ice knife, then I need to pour water inside the mold. Where's the water? There it is. I feel like it won't work. Ice, salt, and then the mixing. It should be elementary. Because won't it have to, to expand? Minus 20 degrees Celsius to fully freeze the water inside the mold. No, the, beginning, that was the whole thing I with this case. I have enough ice and salt for no more than four attempts. A block okay, of so. ice. I have only to use my ice pick. That's why. That's why I took the the case because there was no murder weapon found. Hey, look! The temperature is reducing. No, 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 don't don't pour it yet. Uh a block of ice. I have only to use my ice pick. Ice, salt, and then the mixing. It should be elementary. We need to reach minus twenty degrees Celsius to fully freeze the water inside the mold. Won't salting the ice have the opposite effect? Fuck, as if I know how to fucking... Ice, salt, and then the we cannot be making it correctly. Let us try again and be precise with the timing. If I wish to sh Ice, before a block. Hey, look.
Excellent. Now we must check to ensure that it is adequately frozen. This thing would melt instantly in that steamer, though, dude. An ice weapon for a cold-blooded murder. An ice knife. A surprising and yet a very brilliant idea. It's the perfect weapon. It enables one to kill a man, and then it melts. The only trace it leaves is a small puddle on the ground. Right, which would explain why there was a lot of water in the blood right but how does the knife wound exist in the uh oh. let us try to create an object from silver by using the mold it will take a minute to melt the silver with my gas burner yeah well that took a little bit more than it took now, a little bit less than a minute I can proceed further fucking barehanded dude mold is hot. I should wait for it to cool down. It's going to shatter with how much we've been manipulating it with temperature. Done. Now I can proceed further. A homemade silver knife. Excellent. We have created a knife with the silver that we found. It could have been used to kill Sir Rodney. It was extremely clever to create a weapon that could dissolve at the scene of the crime. Both of these murder weapons are kind of stupid. Presence of water is due to the humid atmosphere caused by the steam. Here's my problem, right? If it was an ice weapon, and you, you gotta remember, where, where, do, where do we find those blocks? We found them at the, at the excavation site, right? Am I wrong? I think we, we found we found them at the excavation site, which would mean that the ice weapon would have had to have been made. And then go all the way to the steam room and then like be in the steam room long enough and it not melt before the murder happened and the ice would need to be strong enough in that time to stab through someone's eye and brain and doesn't it the doesn't the autopsy say it went through went through bone too Yeah, report from coroner. Yeah, cut through the orbit of the frontal bone. I find it very hard to believe that an ice weapon could break through your 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 any any bone in your skull, right? On top of that, like, how do we explain? Uh, the silver inside of the brazier. I think it's more likely that it's a silver weapon. Murder hid the weapon in the clouded steam room. He then placed the knife in the brazier in order to destroy it, which resulted in the melted silver that we found. It's kind of weird that it melted like that, but I find it more believable.
Nice background. So, what was it? It was what? Neptune Ball Bridge. Neptune, Ball, Bridge? Frigidarium. These are the city. Yeah, like, but what was the evidence that it was the drowning and not the mines? This railway is used to remove rubble from the site. Why it makes no sense. Neptune, the god of the sea. Frankly, I have no idea what I grabbed the hooks for. Yeah, it was a red herring. There's like four red herrings in that case. They're like, you know what? Let's leave behind even more evidence. <laughs> Yeah, it's... I don't know. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. 
Perhaps you could explain the cult of Mithras to me. No, there is nothing to say. We, we, we are not the worthy ones. But Sir Rodney believed that he was? He was wrong. I, I have visions. The golden knife, the, the mummy. Oh, it's all my fault. Calm down, Mr. Garrow. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. What can you tell me about Mithras? Oh, so much. It was the core of our work. Why do you ask? Were you seeking the Golden Knife? Ah, I see you are an amateur. Yes, the Golden Knife was our grail. It is said that it bears the only text explaining the ritual of the cult of Mithras. I understand. I read something about immortality. A myth. Uh, the knife would provide immortality only to the worthy one. And yet it is cursed, and it would kill you if you were not initiated. Yeah, it's kind of what knives do. Did you expect to find the golden knife at the baths? Well, Sir Rodney thought that it might be... <laughs> what, a, what a convenient excuse. Observe he must have not been worthy. There. They are so extraordinary. Uh, and we had hoped that... It is a tragedy that he has passed away, taking all of his secrets with him. As soon as I've been released, I will continue Sir Rodney's researches in his memory. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. The paintings in the baths are focused on Mithras, I understand. Yes, they are what make this place remarkable. And that is why Sir Rodney came here? He believed that the Golden Knife, which is an ancient ritual item, was hidden somewhere around the baths. I admit that it would be wonderful if it were true. And you are not concerned by the reputation of this artifact? <laughs> you mean the curse? Ugh! Before someone is dead, it is a blessing. After they are dead, well, then it becomes a curse. Okay. Darrow is tortured by his obsession with the Mithras curse. He has been driven insane, conditioned worsened by the medication he is taking. Darrow is melancholic. He is a victim of over medication, hence the hallucinations and upper behavior. His state has been worsened by the shock of Rodney's death. Now, Pitkin was pretty... He wouldn't have taken him on if that wasn't the case over there. I'm leaning towards Blinkhorn. Can't be Garrow because the inspector thinks it's Garrow. We should use these metal rings to help us reach the bridge pillar. We should use... We should... There might be something behind these leaves. I'll have to find a way of getting there.
Do I need to go all the way to my fucking house to tie a rope to a hook? Fuck, I have to go to the bathroom real quick. We need to figure out how to fucking do this, uh, this hook rope thing. Because you're on the internet. People just love bitching about capitalism. Even though it's the reason you get to play Persona 5 Strikers in the first place. Neptune, the god of the sea. Are we going to fucking shoot the hook with the crossbow? I should use the appropriate. I should use the appropriate object here.
I don't get the I I don't get like <laughs> people fucking hate capitalism so much. It's ridiculous. Those rings on the bridge are perfect targets. <laughs> nice right. gravity. Like, oh, I hate it. I hate capitalism. Even though it's the reason that I get to watch things on Twitch, get to play video games. That I get to, like, say how I feel and not get murdered by Stalin and his evil, not, and his evil fucking brigade. Send Watson to do this shit. Oops, I'm paying attention. Everyone's an armchair econ, like, econ fucking master on Reddit and the internet in general. Are yeah. we inside the hidden temple of Mithras, Holmes? I am not sure. We had better be careful. Armchair economist, essentially. Well, I'll have you know that stock, stockholders and the increased Income requirements. I'm a master at this. I read a post on Reddit. I saw this symbol in the. T Which way should we go, Holmes? Oh, thanks there for cutting me off, Watson. Here. Let's take a look around. I mean, how often have you actually like, been fucking burned by <laughs> capitalism? It tends to be like, ugh, capitalism got me right in the gut. <laughs> Probably a total of never. What's happening to the left of me?
No, capitalism is completely flawless, no problems. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll take it over communism. That's for sure. I like, I like being able to eat. It's actually pretty sick when you can um, sustain your life. It's fucking awesome. Because everyone goes, well, it's because they did it wrong. That's why it didn't work. <laughs> That's the only reason. Watson? It's because a system of... We're getting into it now. It's because it's <laughs> because the system of uh, it's because it's in itself like it just enables a totalitarian regime because it turns out giving all power of the economy and 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 production to the state almost like that enables some kind of totalitarian uh system of government. <laughs> It's kind of like if you give power to the state, the people there will, you know, want that power. Is this fucking Tomb Raider uh, Uncharted? What the fuck are we doing now? <laughs> uh, every single time that communism has existed, it's always enabled some form of dictatorship. Like every single fucking time. It's the golden knife. But how to get it? I love how the only thing stopping these fucking excavators was a rock puzzle. This lamp is not old. The oil is still fresh. Perhaps Sir Rodney passed by here. No, I do not think so. Remember, he went no further than the catacomb underneath the frigidarium. The murderer left this lamp. You've got Mao, Watson, Pol Pot. Watson here. Stalin, Lenin. All of them. Now Watson just runs away. No, you're wrong. was like, oh, we want a case. 
And the guy was like, how about this case? And he goes, sounds funky. Why am I in first person? Oh my god, it's B. And what a tedious puzzle. Holy shit. Come on. The golden knife of Mithras. A long lost relic has resurfaced. Watson, it is time to conclude this case. It is? <laughs> Ooh. Excellent. Now, we should find another way of getting out of here. <laughs> Watson, let's see if you're worthy. Sir Rodney's secret was an important discovery, a metaphorical bomb. He could use it as a powerful means of annihilating anyone who stood in his way, that he alone might take fame and glory. Bill Korn is a deceiving, deserving specialist, sorry, who is aware that he is about to be cast aside over a major discovery. He will lose his chance of a lifetime. So was it Bill Corn with the silver knife or Bill Corn with the ice knife? He killed Sir Rodney to avenge an abuse of power. The death would be to his financial benefit and would allow him to emerge as a luminary in his field, the luminary of the stars. He used the silver reproduction of the golden knife of Mithras. Who the fuck would absolve him in this situation? I mean, I think I have the right line of thinking, right? Don't you think? Oops, fuck me.
Thanks, Watson. Have fun dying in here. Holmes, you surely would not have left me here alone. Very easily, but perhaps not this time. The door controlled by this mechanism is already opened. Alright, fine. Get out of here, Watson. Let's go. Oops, never mind. I forgot to swap bodies. Dog, that doesn't even look like Sherlock in the in the right side. Well, then how would you explain the silver and the brazier? I mean, I don't think it's Gara. I'm just trying to get all the options. Even if Pickin is the owner of the baths, he will surely lose them. For this major discovery will change everything. It will turn the baths into a permanent excavation site to preserve the research. You will never achieve the commercial status that Pickman desires. It's kind of weird, though, that Pickin, who doesn't know anything about this shit, would, like, create that knife. Like, I think he would do a I thought I, this, I don't think he would do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but even then, like, the, the mold was all the way at the excavation site. So that would mean that it was made there. In ice. And then brought all the way to the sauna. Was able to be in the sauna long enough, like, short enough that it would melt. That it wouldn't melt, and it had to be strong enough to break through your frontal bone. And that it wouldn't just evaporate. 
The water, I mean. And everyone's saying that, um... Well, who said that... Who, who, who said that, um... The victim brought the champagne? Someone said that the guy who died brought the champagne. Oh, wait, this, like, had nothing to do with anything. Um... No. I don't think it's Pitkin, because Pitkin wouldn't be going to the excavation area, because, like, I don't think he really cares. Because this tells me that he saw that the person like dropped the lantern because they saw that he would have that he discovered the the knife. I think Pitkin's the least likely. <laughs> I guess it's kind of weird that the ice ma there's some ice maker. Again, like it doesn't matter because in the end, depending on depending on the method, it means that there's just more red herrings. Because if it was if it, if it was if it was a silver blade. Then it's like, oh, then what was the point of the champagne? What was the point of the ice maker? And if it and if it was an ice knife, it's like, oh, then what was the point of the molten silver in the brazier? Right? I'm not sure that I can be helpful at the moment. I mean, also the the inspector thinks it's Garrow, so he's already he's automatically um, absolved. really weird. I'm going to go with my gut. I'm feeling rather uncomfortable. Why have I been put into these cuffs? I fear that you had better get used to them, Mr. Blinkhorn. They are your reward for the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. 
What? No, that's a lie. It is regrettable, for you are a talented archaeologist. I will request that you are placed in a prison where you are unable to dig an escape tunnel. That is, of course, if they decide that you shall live. You The are... consulting detective who salutes your intelligence in performing the perfect crime, yes. But also the gentleman who detests your motivation. You know, the I ice you knife is bullshit. Who would reveal this ice knife is so bullshit. The golden knife. How I ice knife is so like it's dig, so bullshit. It would melt in a sauna instantly. Instantly. Such a pity that there is always someone willing to steal your credit, wouldn't you say? And there was the chance of a lifetime. You had to take it. It was not to be shared. It would also not be able to break through bone. <laughs> but now I am here. And there is no one who will stop the tread of justice, Mr. Blinkhorn. Goodbye. Ice knife makes no sense. Does it? It wouldn't work as a murder weapon at all. would melt instantaneously what the fuck did nobody think it was can you send me a link to that Into your clothes and come. You know, if you can just throw in chat, I want to read it. I've just received a note from Inspector Lestrade, a letter from the suburbs. He is in need of my presence. Whenever he has asked for my assistance, it has always turned out to be entirely justified. I fancy that every one of his cases has found its way into your collection. Uh, yes, they all seem worthy of. However, I regret your fatal. Uh, I'll read it after this cutscene. Point of view of a story instead of a scientific exercise. Oh, Holmes, you. I beg your pardon. I digress. It would be much better to examine this letter than to try to convince you. Exhibit A, I would think stabbing someone in the eye would result in in blood residue on the murderer as... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And as the room was locked and without washing services, there was no means of removing such traces. Garrow was the only suspect with blood present. Exhibit B, the room was locked, narrowing the suspects to three, and the murder was perpetrated in such a fashion as to resemble a mithraic ritual killing. If Blinkhorn was indeed the killer, why did he commit in such a way that he would be a prime suspect given his professional knowledge? If Garrow had only burnt Roman, Roman coins, isn't it convenient that it was the exact quantity of silver necessary to produce the dagger? Garrow was the only one who Bent Cliff had particularly confided in about his discovery. There was no evidence that anyone knew of his discovery. Arrow was psychologically unstable, knew of the mummy and knife, and was obsessed with the punishment of the unworthy. Exhibit F. Sir Rodney brought the champagne and ice bucket. I assume without anyone knowing in advance, forgetting the implausibility of an ice knife in such an environment in the first place, it was only preserved because of the ice bucket, which was entirely unplanned by the killer, unless Bentcliff confided in him. The actual knife had not been disturbed. The killer either was unable to open the vault because of need of an assistant and wanted to wait until Ben Cliff was dead so that he could not claim credit or equally plausibly did not want to disturb the artifact for fear of the curse, Garrow. Garrow was the only one to state that he saw the murder transpire with the flash of the knife 
Despite the thickness of the steam obscuring vision, this could have been equally this could have equally been a hallucination, however. Garrow's mental condition does not exude him exclude him from actions of great complexity as individuals of an unstable but intelligent and obsessive manner can accomplish incredible tasks. The moisture from the steam was a plausible explanation for the watery nature of the blood. I therefore select Garrow as the culprit, the silver dagger as means of execution. I feel the reasons offered above provide a compelling challenge to the game's verdict. Your thoughts? I don't know how Garrow could see the knife. I feel it was illogical so much force. The story makes a big point about the higher presence of water in the blood. The bottle of champagne serves as the transportation for the knife from casing to casting to scene of murder. Yeah, but again, it had to have been in the in the steam room long enough for everyone to sit down for the steam to build up. And by then, like, and also an ice knife would have had to have, it would have, would have had to have been sturdy enough to pierce through bone, bone. <laughs> My phone fell on the floor through bone, dude. I don't believe the knife, ice knife too. And I had some doubt about Garo, not, but not that much. It was obvious that he couldn't arrange this. It's like the most trusted source, Quora. Can someone be killed by a sharp-ended, pointed icicle? Utterly amazing and that I'm reading people right now when that sh the shit has happened. People have been killed by icicles. Obviously, if you could form an ice pick, you could easily dispose of the murder weapon as the ice melts into water. Also, you have to have enough grip. Like, it, it, people forget it's not easy to grip ice. Especially in, like, a, you know, in a in a narrow form. Yeah, well, unfortunate. I don't know. I don't buy it. The the silver knife makes more sense. Then what's the explanation for this for the silver? What's the explanation for the silver and the brazier? By the way, I, I I didn't think it was Garrow purely because the inspector thought it was. That's my only reasoning. Blinkhorn seemed to be far more the far from the type who would commit ritualistic murder. Also, the silver remains unexplained. Uh, let's see. First things first. I have no qualms of revelation that Blinkhorn was the killer. Pinkin. Lacked a sufficient motive, while Garrow was much too simple and paranoid to have pulled any of uh, off. Blinkhorn was the obvious choice. However, further revelation that Blinkhorn used an ice knife instead of a silver one makes no sense, considering that the coroner's report states that the weapon cut through frigging bone. Furthermore, I find it hard to believe the knife would have been solid enough to do any damage at all, considering Blinkhorn would have had to have would have had to make the knife, stick it in the champagne bucket, and then take it all the way to the bathhouse. Even in the bucket, it would have been degraded considerably. True. The alternate solution would have had a few minor inconsist inconsistencies as well, but nothing that would have been able to outright rebuke it. Just seemed like an annoyingly illogical way to end an, what had otherwise been a particularly satisfying chapter of the game. You see, whenever I make my decisions, my decisions are always based on what solution re would result in the least questions having to have been asked afterwards. 
Because, like, if it was the ice knife, it would have been like, okay, how did uh, my questions would have been, how would it have pierced bone? How would have you been able to keep the grip? What's the silver? What's uh, um, what's the melted silver for? What's uh, how did he keep grip? How did it go through bone? How does it not melt? You know, things like that. And also, he said, Garrow also saw said that he saw the knife go flying, right? What? Why would he throw the uh, th why would he throw the knife towards the brazier if it was ice? Just let it melt. Right? But if it's if it's an if it's an ice knife, it's like then well what's the silver for? Why is the silver there? You know? But if it's a silver knife, then if, if if the knife was silver, you can easily explain what would make you think it's ice. Well, let's Rodney brought champagne because he was going to have a huge discovery. All right, that explains that. Uh, and then there was an ice bucket down there because the dude liked fucking Roman ice cream. He like they showed a picture of him enjoying Roman ice cream. Maybe he liked having Roman ice cream. You know, like. That, that, like you can explain more of the of of the red herrings if it's a silver knife than you can if it's an ice knife, which is why I selected silver knife because it would make you have to ask the least amount of questions. It would leave the most unanswered questions, is what I'm trying to say, and that's why I select what I select. But it doesn't make much. It makes like I guess it makes sense. I guess if you really if you really stretch it, but you know. Damn, dude, I hope she moves out. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. A colossal scandal in high society. The well-known and remarkable archaeologist. Yeah, true. So far, that's been the case this whole time, you know. Has been found murdered. Uh, the crime took place at the Roman Baths in Strand Lane, the location of the archaeologist's most recent research. But what is most truly shocking is that the murder of Sir Rodney was at the hand of his former friend and partner, Percival Blinkhorn. The death sentence is the only possible punishment for this breed of villain. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should Can we just say how fucking cozy this place is when it's raining? Like, it's dark and rainy and everything's all lit, like, subtly. This is cozy as f fuck, dude. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You I'm trying to find it. There's a lot of tables in this room, dude. I can tell from Lestrade's handwriting that he was in a hurry when he wrote this letter. The Brackenstall family coat of arms. A wax seal with the monogram E.B. Oh, nice. Abbey Grange, Marsham, Kent, 3.30 a.m. My dear Mr. Holmes, I should be very glad of your immediate assistance in what promises to be a most remarkable case. It is something quite in your line. Except for releasing the lady, I will see that everything is kept exactly as I have found it. But I beg you not to lose an instant, as it is difficult to leave Sir Eustace there. Yours faithfully, Inspector Lestrade. So, what is it? Damn. Promising, as always, it appears to be a case of murder. So you believe that Sir Eustace is dead? I should say so. Lestrade wouldn't have sent for me for less. His writing shows considerable <laughs> agitation, and he is not an emotional man. These people belong to high society. The quality of the writing paper, the E.B. monogram, their coat of arms. The crime was committed before midnight. Holmes, how can you possibly tell? Well, it is all thanks to Lestrade. He wrote his letter at 3.30 in the morning. Imagine the chain of events before that. The local police had to be called in. 
Scotland Yard was notified, Lestrade himself had to make haste there, and finally composed the letter he sent to me. All of that makes for a fair night's work. It makes sense. Lestrade also speaks of the woman he released. That seems to indicate that she had been held somewhere during the crime. Much time has been wasted. Let us find a cab and go to Abbey Grange immediately. I live in hope of an interesting morning. <sighs> yep. It, people solved the case. So only 5% of people said Blinkhorn? Or, or does it mean that only 5% of people chose Blinkhorn with a silver knife? Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, here you are. I'm very glad that you have come, but perhaps I should not have troubled you after all. And why is that? Hi, Kitty. Lady Brackenstall has come to her senses, and she has given so clear an account of the... Okay, also... Also... If... The reason that it's the if, if the if the giveaway that the it's ice knife is that there was water in the blood. Right? There's water in the blood. Which would mean that he stabbed him in the eye and either left the blade in his eye or dropped it to the floor. Why did why did Garrow see the knife? There, that there is not much left for us to do. You remember that Lewisham gang of burglars? What, the three Randalls? Exactly. The father and two sons. It's their work. They stole a silver service, which is of great value. Sir Eustace Brackenstall is dead, then? Yes. His head was knocked in with his own poker. A violent act of aggression. Yes, the poor lady. She has had a most dreadful experience. Are we really going to chalk that up to hallucination? I don't think so. I think that you would best see her and hear her account of the facts. She's in the morning room with her maid, Teresa Wright. Where is the body of the deceased? In the dining room. We haven't touched anything. All right. I'm going to examine it. Very good, Watson. Lady Brackenstall awaits you in the morning room. Well, is it the afternoon? Lady Brackenstall awaits... Baron Lyndon Brackenstall. Lord Ramsay Brackenstall. Ramsay? Hmm, yes, Carl. Lord Brigham Brackenstall. Sir Wartham Brackenstall. The Brackenstall family seems rather austere. Ladies, allow me to introduce myself. Oh, shit. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting Inspector Lestrade in this investigation. Mr. Holmes, I am the wife of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. We were married only a year ago. I am sorry for your loss. Please accept my deepest condolences. I suppose that it is no use my attempting to conceal that our marriage has not been a happy one. I fear that all would tell you that, even if I were to attempt to deny it. Nah, this is, she just... She fell down the stairs. <laughs> Clumsy bitch. Are you really looking at her bust? Never mind. 
You dog. Can you describe to me the events of yesterday evening? Is it really necessary? I have already told Inspector Lestrade all that happened. Yes, madam, it is. Why well, should we live the horror? Sir Eustace retired about half past ten. I sat in this room until after eleven, absorbed in a book. Before I went upstairs, I entered the dining room to fetch a candle and... Oh, God. Please, go on. As I approached the French window, I found myself face to face with an elderly, broad-shouldered man who had just stepped into the room. Close behind the first man, I, I told you, she fell down the stairs. He struck me a savage blow with his fist and felled me unconscious to the ground. And then? When I came to myself, I found that they had secured me tightly to a dining room chair. It was at that instant my unfortunate husband entered the room. He fought with the intruders? Yes, I think he had heard them, for he was holding his stick. But they were three, and he eventually succumbed. One of them, the elder one, struck him a terrible blow with the poker. I fainted once more. When I opened my eyes, they had withdrawn. Then my brave Teresa came to my assistance. Did these three villains steal anything? Yes. I found that they had taken the silver from the sideboard. But you can see for yourself in the dining room. A silver. You mentioned that your marriage was not a happy one. Was there anything specific that was troubling you? He was not a nice man when he was drunk. And he suffered from dark moods, but nothing else. Hmm. The bruises on your hands are at least one week old. Your husband caused those bruises? Oh, do you? Yes, he did. He was very angry at the time. Out of control. Again. Sir Eustace was a drunkard. To be tied to such a man for life is worse than death. Your ladyship? Be careful going down the stairs next time, Jesus Christ. The only business is booming. The Randall gang is back on the street. Less than a fortnight ago, this infamous family of burglars, the Randalls are as they are known, made their reappearance by the way of a brut uh, by, by way of a brutal but successful intrusion. Oh fuck, I didn't pick. I was so confused while you were saying that. <laughs> Into one of the wealthier homes of Sydenham. The police are already on their trail. However, detail oh, this is five pages. However, the details of the crime are being kept confidential, including that in including that of the name of the victim. A witness was able to provide a precise description of all three men, and this will surely give the police a chance to, to complete their profile of this family of delinquents. We would take the liberty of reminding our esteemed readers about this highly dangerous band and to provide the full description as it is available at the moment. The gang has been in business for some considerable time, being a family of three, father and his two sons, can you really call it a gang if it's three people? And his two sons. The elder, Jack Randall, is a man in his 40s and already gray-haired, well of average height and build. Being the mastermind behind the burglaries, he retains control over his sons, both of whom are, in close, are, are close in age but very different in appearance. The first son, William Randall, is tall and broad-shouldered with a small, disproportionate head. The younger brother, Melvin Randall, is of a somewhat weaker constitution and is as skinny as a rake. The gang is wanted not only for their frequent thefts and break-ins, but for the exceptionally brutal pirate career they enjoyed before returning to England. Be, be alert, and may your valuables stay safe. The description of the Randall gang provided by Lady Brackenstall is identical to the one in the Times article. Robbery was faked, and the whole story meant. <laughs> the whole story in 
and the whole story invented in order to blame Eustace's death on the Randalls. The testimonies and evidence match and point to the Randall gang. Yeah, Melvin. What an unfortunate circumstance. Trapper's hut. Are we not going to look at the scratches? This photograph of Lady Brackenstall and her maid Teresa was taken at a port, but which one? Rock of Gibraltar, Adelaide, 1893. So the lady and her maid came from Australia a year and a half ago on this ship. New theory. They're lesbians. And they wanted to go off. I don't know where I'm going. I'm sorry. Oh, God. Biox, can you not come in when I'm saying things like this? <laughs> A trapper's hut. Makes me look bad. <laughs> the cat. Hello, buddy. Hello. Where the fuck am I supposed to be spideying, dude? Teresa, I would like to hear your testimony. Certainly, sir. I've never seen someone named Teresa and have blonde hair. Ah, she's old. Buffy. He's got man hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She married? It's caring. As I sat by my bedroom window, I saw three men in the moonlight down by the lodge gate. But I thought nothing of it. Oh my god, nice. Oh, if I'd known. And then? Mine's like... And it was more than an hour after that you can't I even see my arms. That's how wide it is. Down I ran to find her tied to the chair and him on the floor with his head smashed. That's all I know. Does it have any designs on it? I was listening to what she said. My mistress is very tired. Can't you allow her to her room? Fuck off. It's not your choice. I'm the god. I'm god in this world. Don't you realize? How do I do that? A trapper's hut. A trapper's. Mine's mine's a Corsair branded one. It's all my peripherals are Corsair. What the fuck am I supposed to be seeing? Like I can't interact with now I can. These scratches are most definitely made by the picture frame. Hey. As I sat by my bedroom window, I saw three men in the moonlight down by the lodge gate, but I thought nothing of it at the time. Oh my, if I had known. I went to bed, and it was more than half an hour later that I heard my mistress scream. As I ran to find her tied to the chair and him on the floor with his head smashed. That's all I know. This is Sir Eustace's safe. There may be something important inside. I must ask Lady Brackenstall to open it. Yeah, it's not the fucking methods.
But to be fair, my choices make more sense than the games do when it comes to the murder methods. Lady Brackenstall, could you open this wall safe? No, it is my husband's safe. I do not know the combination. We have to open it. I'm sure if I hit your eye hard enough into it, it's going to open. Ladyship? I'll make your face symmetrical again. God, I gotta go. The body is still in the dining room where the murder took place. You should eh, it's not so bad. Of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. All right, I'm out. <laughs> not worth it. <laughs> so, Watson. What have you learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, I can confirm that the death was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. I was gonna say, haven't all the deaths been instant? But no, I guess not. They, we did drown. They did. The Mexicans did drown a bunch of Chileans. This door leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Apparently, the criminals did not venture there. No, I, I I watched one episode and I wanted to fucking kill myself. The hunting scene. I like the I like the movies of Robert Downey Jr. though. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. This candlestick is valuable. It is interesting that it was not also stolen. I don't like a lot of TV. An empty silverware. That's box. probably just me. It appears that the Don't take it personally. Stolen the contents. The movies are so much fun, though, dude. And also, the chick from Mean Girls in it is in it, and she's fucking good looking. <laughs> this compatibility. a bit more series in tone yeah uh-huh <laughs> sailors knots that's interesting this rope was handled by the murderers we need a scent hound to follow their trail i will take it with me go find toby <laughs> This is the chair that Lady Brackenstall was tied to. I do. I was wondering why I wouldn't just stop. A bottle of wine is missing here. There we go, all the done. The criminals did not thoroughly ransack the house. They only took a little silverware. That's strange. You know, it's got better reflections than Resident Evil. The bell rope was cut by someone taller than me. It doesn't have giant <laughs> mommy milkers. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> A fur trader's cabin. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. Fuck is that? There is beeswing at the bottom, as if the wine had not been decanted before being poured. What do these words mean? This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. I don't drink wine. It is rather strange that only one of these glasses has dregs of bees wing inside it, while the other two are clear. What does decanting mean? A decanter standing next to the open bottle, an inseparable pair indeed. Is it something that like lets the wine breathe? 
Get all those tannins. Chateau Calon Segur, French wine, Grand Cru. Ah, yes, yeah, so it's much like a ropeway. You know, a ropeway. Immiscible liquids or of a liquid and solid mixture such as in... You know, I have to find something that is alcoholic that I actually like the taste of. I haven't really found much yet. I hate wine, though. I know that. A fur trader's cabin. The only thing I've had that I've actually like liked decent amount was amaretto sours, but that's about it. Nothing else in here. Interesting. That's true. Even though I'm gonna forget all this by now. I can even that fucking be the play a little poker. Quite a large stick, a formidable weapon. The head was cracked with the force of the blow. This guy's feet. Barefoot. He had therefore been in They're bed huge and did not have time to fully dress. Yeah. There are, th there are three people drinking wine out of these glasses. One of the three probably prefers wine with bee swing. There are two people drinking wine out of these glasses. The remaining glass with the bee swing consisted solely of the dregs from the other two. That one sounds stupid. The death of Sir Eustace could have been due to a poker blow. It is covered in blood. Sir Eustace might have struck his head upon it while falling from the blow. That is, I've one played two. Explanation. Well, I've I've beaten two. I beat Final Fantasy fifteen. It's actually the first ever game I streamed. Is Final Fantasy fifteen? First ever game I streamed and beat on on stream. First time ever. And before that, I beat Final Fantasy seven Crisis Core on the PSP which is the prequel to Final Fantasy VII. But apart from that, I think I played Final Fantasy V on the PSP, but the port was so bad that I couldn't finish the game. Um, and I've played a few hours of Final Fantasy XIII, and I've played a decent chunk of Final Fantasy XIII Part Two, only because Sarah's hot. As long as she's over 18. <laughs> Otherwise, I was kidding. A trapper's hut. A trapper's hut. It's S E R A, by the way. Just look up Sarah Bikini DLC. <laughs> the death was instant.
this door. Time to use the dog. <laughs> there are three glasses on the dining room table. I was wondering if... Oh, I forgot. When I came to myself the first time, each of them had a glass in his hand. They might have been a father and his two sons. They talked together in whispers, and then they left. Your ladyship? Your lady. Please leave my Mary. Fuck alone. off! Jesus. You don't get a say, you're a goddamn maid. She's 18, thank God. My brother's beaten that my, my brother's put like fucking a metric fuck ton of hours in the Final Fantasy 13 too. It fucking loves that game. I want to play more I want to play more Final Fantasy games. It's just I I want I, I want to play 16 when it comes out in a million years. Is not that the one with the fucking horrible voice acting laugh? Ha 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 Yeah, it's like he's supposed to be he was supposed to be like sarcastic or some shit. Yeah, I consider but if but remember if you think about it Final Fantasy 7 Crisis Core and Final Fantasy 15 are both uh, the only two, the only two Final Fantasy games I've ever beaten, are Final Fantasy games that don't have a turn-based combat system. Both Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core and XV have active combat systems, and they're the only two I've ever beaten. Persona 5 is the only game I've ever beaten that has a turn-based combat system. Toby. Come on, Toby. We need the best nose in the British Empire on this case. And there's one shoe near his fucking head. Nope. Unfortunate. One of these days. You gonna come with me or not, dog? I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson's cold cuts. After we, after we finish this, let's go, we're going... You know, I got my I got my tentative schedule up. Search, Toby. Oh my God, I'm Toby. First person, Toby. We have the most folds in the British Empire. The intruders entered the shed for some reason when they were making off with the silverware. Nose in the British Empire. Oh, oh. 
The scent leads to the well. I should check it. Indeed. So check it. Eye drop is done. Give me treat. God damn it. The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. The criminals left the house through the French window. They walked to the shed, then across to the well, before fleeing by climbing over the wall. I wonder why they chose such a winding route. Oh, I wonder. It's true. Is you're the pussy. There's something glittering at the bottom there, but how can I reach it? So fucking funny. I need a hook. Found one. This hook might be useful. Small gardening tools, nothing of great interest. Why can't I interact with them then? This old suitcase sounds hollow. It must be empty. Bags of seed. Some empty bags were recently moved. All right, let's go. Nice. That was smooth. <laughs> Silverware. This is hardly a coincidence. Not gonna lie, I'm leaning towards it not being the Randalls. The Brackenstall coat of arms. It appears that we have found the stolen silverware. Yeah, and then take it and then like drop it off in a fucking well, like 10, 10 feet from the house. <laughs> Robbery is confirmed as the motive for the crime. The criminals have planned to may have planned to turn simple that they had dumped. Uh <laughs> Uh, did my game just crash? That it did, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah. the only way Sherlock Holmes could have beaten me. Save files corrupted and everything. Alright, what was it? Um, oops, it was...
We found your silverware, Lady Brackenstall. It had not been taken very far. Is that true? I am very thankful to you, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> your fucking ladyship. liar. You got something to say, Teresa? We found your mistress's silverware. Oh, that's good news. You really are as clever as they say. Indeed. What a cheeky motherfucker. Indeed. There's still more to inspect in Lady Brackenstall's... God damn it. What do I have to look for? Just take me there. Oh, it's probably because I still need to figure out the combo. Let us try to open this safe. This safe can be cracked. I only have to pay attention. The dial will vibrate when it is set to the correct number. I think vibrate's the wrong word. Um, So I thought I thought it was like I thought it was like my controller was supposed to vibrate. Ah, uh, Sir Eustace, your current physical mental state is of great concern. There are several signs of a hep hepatic compression decompression the last time that we met your eyes were bloodshot and your skin was tinged with yellow there is a particular odor from your breath that is common in those suffering from liver damage there then there are the lung absence abscesses that we have discussed the leg cramps you have described to me are caused by an anal an, an alteration to the nervous system, which in turn is caused by an excess of alcohol. That includes the tremors. Your liver seemed excessively hard at the time of your examination, which is a sign of an evolving cirrhosis. There are also signs of uh, fluid in the per periton per peritoneal at ca fuck you cavity, which are evident of with your swollen stomach. The pain beneath your left rib indicates a pancreatic mal- Dude, just fucking kill yourself at this point, which may lead to fatal and fulment pancreatitis. Your condition may pose a risk to others. Your excessive alcohol consumption lowers your self-control and heightens your aggression. I am available to help you with this problem. There are a number of treatment options. You need to see it on your screen so you know how to spell it. It is common practice to keep one's valuables in a safe behind a painting. It should not really pose a challenge for a criminal. What was the one where, where they're like, I love it when you talk down to me? Coins, possibly of value, but they're scattered without care. Oh, wait, hang on. Probably gotta talk to her now. Oh, what a horrible.
Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Sir Eustace's doctor speaks of his violent behavior. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me, and all because I dared to stand up to him in defense of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead. But a devil he was, if ever one walked the earth. We met him only 18 months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. One her with his title and his money and his false London ways. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was specially hard for her. Lady Brackenstall married Sir Eustace shortly after arriving in England and remained at home during that time. There is little possibility that she or her maid are acquainted with anyone in the country. Lady is acquainted with someone from the Rock of Gibraltar. Yeah, the person in that photo is her maid. Oh yeah, what was it? This door leads to the other. Holy shit. I do now. One hundred and ten million dollars. Is G two is G two doing well? <laughs> or do they suck now? Second place. They're my favorite team. Have you found something interesting? Let us see how the rope was cut. The fibers at the end of the rope are smoothly cut. Let us try to find out what tool was used to cut the rope. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, hey, where's where's purse? It seems kind of weird to get rid of him. And it's frayed. The fibers from this cut appear to be different. How about a knife? If I cut the rope with a knife, it matches the original. Yeah, G two's everywhere. One of my favorite esports stories is Oscar Knight in uh in League of Legends. Like where two teams were playing and that whoever won had to go up against like the best team in the league. So both teams are trying their best to not win, <laughs> but not make it obvious that they were throwing. Oh, what a horrible thing to... 
please leave my Mary alone. She suffered so much. She... Meanwhile, over here in Overwatch, we've got two pedophiles in two seasons. Overwatch fans can't catch a break, dude. Yeah, over, I've been, I haven't played Overwatch in a very long time. This door leads to. Overwatch has a lot of problems. One, they're owned by Blizzard, which is a, which is a, a reality worse than death. so much and I feel like being an esports pro is not a life that you really want just based on the stories I've heard Barefoot. He had their f Jesus Christ, dude. I wouldn't I I'm surprised they, they let him play. What do you Look know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man when sober, but an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments, he was apparently capable of anything. Why, once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's dog and set it alight. Another day, he threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm, the alcohol seemed to madden him. To the point that we were forced to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. Inspector, I have recovered the stolen silverware. You are a wizard, Mr. Owen. Teresa. And where is it? In the garden well. Excuse me? Unique, isn't it? Rather absurd. Oh my god, <laughs> shut up. What is the point of stealing silverware and then throwing it down into a well? I know, Perhaps right? It was used as a temporary hiding place. Or simply the thieves wanted to get rid of it. It is up to us to solve Are you this really mystery. that stupid, Sherlock? That's true. Sir Eustace was murdered by the one person who was visiting that night. It was he who tied up Lady Brackenstall. He is tall and strong. The person who was visiting that night was probably a sailor.
The Rock of Gibraltar, a built carrier from the Adelaide Southampton London line, Cunard Building, James Street, London, was has returned from a six month voyage through India, New Zealand, and Australia. The ship brought to England Miss Mary Fraser, the heiress to the Fraser family, owning land and tin mines in Australia. This reportedly beautiful young lady is presently engaged to Sir Eustace Brackenstall, one of the wealthiest gentlemen in Kent. Here it is. That seems like about the same level of success. The shipping company, the Adelaide Southampton London line and its address. Interesting. It must be the place where they keep the records including the one for the crew of the Rock of yeah. Gibraltar. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard, they'll give it to you without any problems. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. Who's the specialist? Holmes, don't look at me like that. Please leave. Um, who's a specialist? Oh, jeez. I mean, probably. No, why are you fucking on the floor right there? Say hi. Come say hi to my mods. Am I right? He's sleepy. Cat swim. <laughs> It's my boy. <laughs> Release me, peasant. <laughs> How the fuck do I contact Wiggins? Oh, Wiggins! Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? your service mr holmes i need a register my young friend if you could borrow it there will be half a guinea for every one of you i need the crew list of the rock of gibraltar in 1893 and their current employment i'm straight on it mr holmes do you really think they'll find it holmes my secret police is better than the yard in many ways Here it is, Mr. Holmes, but we can't take it back. It's too risky. Put it on the table. I'll take care of it. Good work, young Wiggins. Oh, scram. Get your dirty ass feet out of my house. I left it right on the table for you, sir. Right, this is the table. This list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. This must mean that someone on this list is our mysterious visitor. And these are the lists of the senior officers of the Adelaide Southampton London Line ships. Let us find out who was in London upon November the 7th.
I mean... This list shows the I do not think that this sailor Oops, is wrong person. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. Oh. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be in. Hey, I'm here. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. I do not think that this sailor has any connection to the case. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London. Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the date of the crime, and he is due to depart in two days. I think... it It's probably the biggest indie game that's still an indie game. This list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar, on which Lady Brackenstall and her... I do not think... I do not... Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the date of... This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. Captain Jack Crocker is our mysterious visitor. He well, I mean, it's still made and owned by one guy. Just because it's popular and big, you know, right? Yeah, it is. He wasn't acquired or anything, was he? This Crocker, do you think... It would be interesting to meet him. Our young friend should be able to find him. Yo, Wiggins. Wiggins, could you find a way to bring this... No, I'm talking about Crocker FNAF. Here, to us? here? Holmes, that could be dangerous. No problem, Mr. Holmes. I know that Microsoft owns Minecraft. I've had it for a while now. Mr. Holmes, I was informed that you were looking for me, and I'd like to know why. Yes, it is important that we talk. You will soon understand why. Asmophobia isn't that big, though. Now, at least not as big as FNAF and Minecraft are or were. What the fuck is this camera? Yeah, but can you really put it on the same level as like Minecraft or other indie games? I don't think you can.
I haven't played it, which means it's not popular. Obviously. Isn't Tetris up like there? Oh, it did. You are acquainted with Lady Mary Brackenstall, are you not? Yes, I think I do remember her from when I was first officer, but I still don't see... It seems your relationship went beyond that of mere passenger and first officer. How dare you! Indeed, how reckless a feeling is love, particularly if one is prepared to commit a murder in its name. Explain yourself this instant! You are aware that the murder made the headlines of the morning press. You read the newspaper report, but to your dismay, found it much fabulous. I've considered streaming it. I've never actually to see you, you beat Minecraft. Away. You needed to know what I had found. You? And what do you know? That evening, you were with Lady Brackenstall, despite the danger. I'm not afraid, Mr. Holmes. Besides, all of this is just guesswork. You would be right. If there was no evidence. What then? I'd be too mischievous. Lady Brackenstall was tied to a chair on the night of the murder. And it was you who tied her up. You call that evidence? Yeah. Only a sailor could tie a knot. Oops. I clicked the wrong one. <laughs> Lady and You call that evidence? Yes, as she was tied with a sailor's knot, your handiwork. So, it's a sailor who's done it. That proves nothing, Mr. Owen. As if human beings that aren't sailors are incapable of tie tying a sailor knot. The explored, anyway. On the night of the murder, I was aboard the shark. I was supervising the repair of a porthole. At night? It was an emergency. There was a leak. You can ask the ship's carpenter. I'm not a very fun person to play with. I'm sure that he can. Perfect. In that case, we have nothing more to talk about. Good evening, gentlemen. Holmes, what should we do now? Would you like to check his alibi? No. There is no doubt that these men will testify in his favor, and there will be no way to check. So, what then? So, we must work with what we have. We have all the puzzle pieces. Now I understand why you dissected the bell rope. Rocker is lying. His involvement is clear. He appeared as soon as he heard that I was looking for him, thus signaling his guilt. Captain Crocker was aboard the Sharp on the night of the murder. He was not afraid to confront me. He had confident demeanor. The captain is the killer. Sir Eustace was murdered by one person who was visiting that night. The murderer is tall and agile and a high-ranking sailor. Domestic accident. The death of Sir Eustace was an accident caused by a struggle with his wife. Lady Brackenstall and her maid committed a cr the crime in self-defense. You decided there was no point in blaming this poor woman. Brackenstall and her maid killed Sir Eustace and attempted to cover their crime. They, des they deserve to be treated as criminals. Ooh, interesting. 
This the Randall gang is obviously not the right option. <laughs> The Sir Eustace was murdered by the Randall gang. Robbery is confirmed as the motive for the crime. Yeah, bullshit. The case is too simple for you. Take this opportunity to give all the credit to your friend Lestrade. Your name will not appear in the press. The speed with which you resolve this thorny problem is indicative of genius. The police naturally only demonstrated their incompetence. Yeah, it's obviously not this. You think? Honestly, I'm hesitant for it to be Crocker. I find the idea that a, only a sailor could tie a sailor's knot is bullshit. Like, why would he tie up his why Why would he tie up his lover to make it look like a murder? Like, <laughs> she. Yeah, so there's three options. Either the Randall gang killed him, which is the dumbest option, or there was an accident, or the, they planned to kill, they attempted to cover their crime, or the sailor came over, made it look like a murder, made, made it look like a robbery, and killed him. The husband so that he could but that he's like already gonna he's gonna leave in like two days anyway right so I'm gonna go with this one and I'm going to condemn them I have reached my conclusion, Lestrade. I regret that your culprits are in the next room. Lady Brackenstall and her maid? Yes, and their mise-en-scene after the death of Sir Eustace can only be... <gasps> no, stop, stop! The sailor has a knife, a sailor's knife, and we concluded that a knife was used <laughs> to cut the to cut the rope. <laughs> right? <laughs>
I love how it's like, no, it can't be the Randalls, because if, like, it had, like, I don't know. <laughs> let's, um, let's check a few things. Yeah, because if it was really them that that if it was really if it was really the two of them that f that faked the robbery, why does the scent leave the mansion and not go back into the mansion? Wiggins, could you ask Mr. Crocker to come here again, please? Right away. Why did you make me come here again, Mr. Holmes? It is over. I know that it was you who killed Sir Eustace Brackenstall. What? I know, because of the height at which the rope was cut. The knife used was a sea knife. The knots were sailors' knots, and not least, the sheer force that was put behind the killing blow. And because you are the only one who knows Lady Mary Brackenstall in London. And because you love her. It's true. Yeah! It's time for you to tell us the whole truth. <laughs> I admit that I loved Mary madly from the first day that I met oh, her. Oh, bullshit. But I never did come to visit her, for I believed that she was in a happy household. When I talked to her maid who told me everything, I was insane with rage. I was due to set sail for six months away. I wanted only to see her again. But it turned into a damnable nightmare when he barged in. He dared raise his hand to her. He! He was not even worthy of licking her boots. Oh, I regret nothing. I admit I killed the monster out of love for her. She will forgive me if she is able. Lady Brackenstall already forgave you. She said nothing. Mary! But that makes her an accomplice as well as her maid. It places her in danger yet again. Mr. Holmes! You would not have managed to protect her. Till I die, do you hear me? Here is a letter that sets everything clear. And it is the one that should be disclosed to the police. I am the only culprit. Mary had nothing to do with it. Now it is time to end this. You gonna fight me? What the fuck? Oh, he's trying to kill himself. You should have let me die. How can I live if Mary suffers? Or we're, we're sorry, probably going to get executed Captain anyway. But there's <laughs> been quite enough death in this case. So far, everyone I've I've <laughs> Inspector, I've prosecuted I has been fucking Sir killed. <laughs> killer. He tried his best to perform his own justice. Well, I'm not surprised. Yes, it was me. I confess. Here is a piece of evidence that can be used in court. Perfect. A case that went smoothly for once. Dog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I had a fucking huge brain moment at the very end. <laughs> What? People didn't make the same moral choice? Dude, what 
that's not how whatever. Everyone in this everyone in this game so far has always chosen like the nice option. Like, oh, we'll let the convicted murderer get away. We'll absolve the convict we'll absolve the murderer. Like, dude, an eye for an eye is not how the world should work. So I'm gonna fucking I'm going to I'm going to condemn murderers. It's it's pretty fucking easy. I can't believe I I oh, caught that shit at the very sake. end. Whatever is going on? This uh, was hello, in the movie. Watson. You're early. Did you kill all of your patients? What? Clones? Where have all these wretched bees come from? Yeah, let's sweat at the bees. The temperature of the room so as to prevent them from hibernating. I needed to take a sample of honey, but it worked, Watson. We will have honey all year round. Ridiculous and dangerous. They are domestic bees. Apis mellifera, such industrious workers. Anyway, Watson, I am sorry, but I must leave you. I'm in rather a hurry. You have a new case? Yes, but nothing as thrilling as this experiment, a theft of plants at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew. I'm helping a minister who's an old friend of mine. You can join me if you like. Well, I'll admit that I'd far rather accompany you than remain alone here with these workers of yours. Besides, you'll need a helping hand with the flowers you're intending to bring back. Watson, however did you guess? For the great Sherlock Holmes to bother with the theft of plants. Come on, admit that you're planning to spoil your little bees with some rare pollens. <laughs> Since when did I become so transparent? Let us go. The doggo's doing just fine. <laughs> I believe I deserve recognition for my enormous brain that I had right here. All right. Yeah, Carnes is guilty. I chose to condemn him. Forty percent of people made the same moral choice. I chose political game here. Because it made sense, and that's the only time people agreed with me. I chose to condemn Blinkhorn. Okay, this time people actually chose to kill him, like to 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 do the moral, like same moral choice. But just because, like, what was the other moral option? True. I never got a conviction wrong. I only got the methods wrong so far. And even then, I'm 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 fifty fifty right now on 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 the murder method. Honestly, it's the same murder method. It's just the matter of how he how he casted the knife. You know, it's still the same the same type of knife. It's just the matter of how did he make the knife is the only difference, <laughs> which really doesn't matter in the long run. Well, Holmes, here we are at the Royal Botanic Gardens. There's no doubt that this place is beautiful, but are you really intent on investigating the theft of the plants? Yes, of course. Don't touch anything else, yeah. is that clear? Just go and get a bucket of fertilizer, and without turning it over this time, Man, they really don't like the letter Z in, in day, British English, do they? How may I help you? If you are here for a visit, please do come back on Sunday. I am afraid that it cannot wait. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. 
We are investigating the theft of plants that took place here five days ago. A remarkable collection, I believe. So you're the one in charge, eh? A small favor for a friend. Now to whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? I am Martin Hamish. I am the deputy director of Kew Gardens. And that fellow yonder is Albert. He I, don't, I don't know. I am delighted to meet you. What can you tell us about the plants? They were rare and exceptional plants. We presented them at our last exhibition. We haven't removed the stand yet. It is still in the large glass house. We only learned of their disappearance the evening after the exhibition, and nobody saw anything. No doors were forced? No, but I would imagine that for a thief it would be fairly easy to gain entry, for there are no guards here. Yeah. Well, if you don't mind, we will take a look. Now, you say that it is in the large glass house. Yes, the one just behind me. Just a second, since Albert has nothing else to do. Albert, show these gentlemen where the exhibition was held. How many people work here? Only myself, but occasionally two students, Albert, whom you have met, and Miss White. <laughs> here it is. This is the place where the stolen plants were exhibited. Thank you. And he's really is been something the matter? affected by is these plants. Is... All right, the plants were valuable and rare, but it seems to me that the tragedy that took place here only two days ago has been entirely forgotten already. What tragedy are you referring to? My... the director of Kew Gardens, Mr. Montague Dunn. He died here just two days ago. We're very sorry. We were not aware. The two of you were good friends? He... He was my father. Oh. Dear, our condolences. We should not be troubling you. Please do excuse us for the intrusion. Perhaps a little you bit understandable. Here, in the large glass house. Holmes? Yes. Just here, near the door to the colonial collection. He suffered a heart attack. Just like that. So suddenly. It was terrible. Excuse me, gentlemen, but I cannot remain here. If you need me, I'll be in the reserve. That's the room next to the front of the large greenhouse. Of course, we understand. The plants were here. All of them were stolen. Fucking plants. These... <laughs> Shitty balloons. Do not touch. Now it only hurts when you touch it. Touch. Here is a list of the stolen plants. You think you may have overwatered these plants? These trees with their roots in water must originate from Louisiana. Ah yes, the bayou. I remember our visit. In the case of the awakened. Dude, I checked out Game Theory's According YouTube Albert, channel. This is where his father, Montague, died. Like a month ago. Dead. Oh my god, dude, what the fuck is all over that channel? Traces are thinner in some places. These boot marks are fresh. It appears as though someone was dragging their feet. Oh God. The footprints reveal that someone staggered here. Oh my goodness. I can't imagine doing like speedrunning games that take that long to finish. Like there's got to be Like I know I know with things like Resident Evil and Dark Souls there's like a limit to how long you can take a break. Is it's got to be like way more lenient with Final Fantasy speedruns. This sign is broken. Something heavy was dropped upon it. Like they got to be like okay look you can you can you can take a total of 15 minutes or something like that the door was smashed at shoulder height 
This door handle is new. It was recently changed. The esconson was breached near the handle. The door was forced from the inside of the colonial collection room. The handle was changed afterwards. I think we need to inspect the colonial collection room. Oh my god. So, I mean, that doesn't mean that you can't take a break, right? Water Lily Greenhouse. According to this, they have light and moisture control in some parts of the building. That's good. Can I help you, gentlemen? I bet. Move, Watson. Do you work here? Yes, but part-time only. I'm also studying botany at the University of London. You're following in your father's footsteps, then that is commendable. Well, even if botany is not my strongest suit, there are people who say that I could be a good manager. All right, fashion police time. Dude, I, I got a shaving cut, like, right here. I didn't feel it until I noticed that I cut myself. I just pressed hard. I just pressed down too hard. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. What should we do next, Holmes? Harm house. I feel like my facial hair has been coming in faster lately, so it's like I have to shave like way more often now for some reason. If I don't shave, all I all I get is a neck beard. I don't get anything on my on like my cheeks. So it's not like I can grow it out and have it work. I have to shave it, otherwise people make <laughs> assumptions. Myopic. Inexpensive glasses. Bro, can you just say nearsighted? Why must we point this out? Albert told us about the tragic death of Mr. Dunn, the late yeah. director of Kew Gardens. Tragic indeed. His heart attack was quite unexpected. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Yeah, my problem is that I have blonde hair, so... Like, here, it's dark, but on my cheeks, it's super light. Like, my facial hair on my neck grows in, like, dark brown, but my hair is blonde. <laughs> I tend to pickpocket. Lock. Oh, we have to get to. Oh, 
locked. You are here. Seed house. Nursery. Colonial collection. Farm house. Dry tropics. Yeah. Water lily greenhouse. Ventilation system. All right. Did I get everything? Did he say everything he wanted to say? Never mind. Reserve. Director's office, cloakroom, and laboratory. Laboratory. Why are they to say everything different? Just, just, just different enough to piss me off. A reagent. Every time I hear that, I want to die. According to this, they have light and moisture control in some parts of the building. Very strange. Half of the colonial collection is absent. These windows were perfectly cleaned. The smell is strong. It is a detergent. That's a that that's a nice 2D stone texture. This broken fragment was the result of a heavy blow. Oh, then I should add it to my little my little widget thing then. A fragment of marble, most likely chipped from a statue or sculpture. Part of this greenhouse was emptied and thoroughly cleaned. This is one of the outlets of the ventilation system. Soil. It should have come from a flower pot. The soil on the side of this flower shelf is the same as that on the ground. Like a mushroom. Fragments of a flower pot. It fell down here. Here. Fragments of a flower pot. This pot was broken fairly recently. A flower pot recently fell down from these shelves and was misplaced. All right. There are a few Final Fantasy games that I want to play. I really want to play seven. says that's a good that's a good one water lily greenhouse probably the remake but i'm not sure according to this they have light and moisture control in some parts of the building but i know the remake doesn't cover everything dry tropics what should we do next Holmes? yeah I mean, isn't it? Is this, aren't they supposed to be coming out with more, like, forever ago? But, dude, you get cutscene quality Tifa for the whole fucking game. These flower pots are beautiful. They are intended to be used for exhibition purposes. The symbol is not from Kew Gardens. I mean, <laughs> yeah.
Who the heck is the other chick? The one that has like the shoulder pads. You know the one. Dry tropics. I'm not sure. None of none of the characters are in Crisis Core except for Cloud and Sephiroth. So that's I don't know them all too well. There is a smell of burning. Uh oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> a protective mask. Someone set it alight, but it did not burn. A door handle? Why would anyone throw such a thing in the fire? The door handle to the colonial collection and that of the fireplace are made of the same material. The symbol is not from Kew Gardens. The remains of a picture frame. A broom handle was half burned. The plants were set alight fairly recently. Some have not completely burned. Dude, Crisis Core was good. It's my first ever Final Fantasy game I ever beat. We're just good old times. And it's funny, I didn't even know I didn't even know the Final Fantasy VII story, and I was and I was in it. I was into it, dude. I'm not I'm not doing this again. Why not 13? A ventilation system. It should regulate the temperature of the staff buildings. What's wrong with 13? Now, I said I played a little bit of it, but never I never beat them. Thirteen is way too fucking long, dude. Yeah, but 13 is really long. Seed house. Locked. Locked. Thirteen is really long and doesn't even have a good story. Yeah, well, you tell me what a fail C is. Locked. You tell me that the, the inner workings of the Fal C and the Lassie, alright? You can do that, I'll take back everything I said.
You tell me that the Neil isn't a cringe lord. Dude, Naoto's a great character. He's got huge boobs. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. But seriously, how does she strap those things down? I don't get it. Excuse me, but I have to tidy up this room. Makes no oh, sense. House. I know, she's... Like, I don't even... Like, I don't even know what to... It just... She's more of like a... What? Is, is tomboy the right... Is tomboy still an okay term? <laughs> or, do people, or do people not like that term anymore? Someone fell violently against this side, and they were injured yeah. in a clash. Most She's a Mulan. A wound. All the clues around here are quite suspicious. I need my imagination to make sense of it all. I mean, people are going to come out of here. This reconstruction reveals a disturbing fact. Montague Dunn damaged the door of the colonial collection room. He was in a panic, or the door was locked. Was it an accident, or a murder then, I wonder? Yeah, dude, you have no idea how confused I was when I was, when I was playing Persona 4 Golden, and I watched the opening to Persona 4 dancing the dancing game the opening of that one I was so confused when Naoto <laughs> had boobs in the in the opening <laughs> I was completely lost <sighs> like what did they do to Naoto <laughs> I mean, they do a decent job. I asked Inspector Lestrade to take Montague Dunn's body to Scotland Yard. It's ready for autopsy, then. This watch is of great value. A beautiful feather pen of a good make. Are these always upside down? A membership card for the London Crest Club. Even as a watermark. To Mr. F. Wayne, director of Wayne and Sons Printing Company. My friend, your posters for the great exhibition at Kew Gardens are very beautiful, but it's surely unnecessary to mention all of the staff. My name alone will be sufficient. Uh, you're a shithead. Subtle off white coloring. First of all, let us carry out an external examination. There are no suspicious marks upon the chest. Let us finish our external examination. So Dog, that look at that belly with the autopsy. The vessels and the pupil of the eye appear quite normal. The air from the lungs carries a faint, 
floral aroma. Hmm. There is an injury to the skull, most probably caused by the fall in the water lily greenhouse. Yeah. My brother, like, was doing this whole thing where he was going to be playing, like, a bunch of Final Fantasy games, but he just dropped all of them. He was playing Final Fantasy X for a while, and he just stopped playing. No redness, stings, or bruises. I know they're on PC now, so that's cool. Nothing suspicious here. Now, let us examine the internal organs. Hell yeah. We're playing a surgeon simulator now? This is very clean. Hey, you think he's okay? <laughs> the tissue on the inferior lobe of the right lung is damaged, most probably caused by toxins from an unknown plant. The lungs are congested and edematous. Edematous. Your heart is a wild fucking organ, the dude. It's crazy. Blood vessels show no pathological signs. The heart tissue shows no visible pathological signs. This is not how body work. This guy's body's like made out of plastic parts. The liver tissue is brown. There are no visible pathological signs. I think he died because there's no blood in his body. The liver is enlarged. It would seem that he was suffering from an alcohol addiction. This is the cleanest inside I've ever seen in my entire life. Look, it's the duodenum. There is a small amount of content. It appears that he breakfasted lightly, only a short while before his death. The stomach tissues show no visible pathological signs. That sound. S slap that shit. The suspicions have been substantiated. Montague Dunn, the director of Kew Gardens, died from poisoning. Plant poisoning, to be more exact. You mean... Yes, it is murder. Mm. We should inform Lestrade. Yes, but do remember, Watson, that I discovered the murder. The challenge is mine. The challenge, Holmes? We need to locate that deadly plant. Such a perfect murder appeals to me. Murder of any kind appeals to you. Is that all we need to do? No. We also have the people working at Kew Gardens. Martin Hamish and the son of the victim, Albert Dunn. And also Miss White, of whom we spoke with Mr. Hamish. Should we bring them all here for interrogation? No. A few no. more innocuous questions at Kew will suffice as well as a discreet delve into their personal affairs. Yes, Watson, it is time now to open the doors. Even those in the staff building, I suppose that is necessary. We should also be concerned with the victim himself. After all, we don't know very much about Montague Dunn. You're enjoying this already, aren't you? <laughs> More than a little. Being trapped in the colonial collection room by the killer, Montague Dunn was affected by inhaling a ver a, a virulent a virulent vegeta Just say poison from a plant. <laughs> Fuck. Hang I gotta hit the bathroom real quick.
I think I'm gonna make curry this week. I'm gonna order groceries after the scrum, and I think I'm gonna make curry this week. I have a hankering. Get some carrots, get some potatoes. Already got chicken. Get some chicken stock. Invite all of my friends. Just kidding. Oh, now we're, now we're reading a book without a title. Oh my god, look at all the options. Mr. Hamish, can you explain to us what happened to the Colonial Collection? It seems somewhat depleted. But, uh, oh, most likely maintenance work, tidying up. You're not sure, then? But you're the deputy director. Well, I am busy. I cannot be everywhere at once. Ah, yes, we found our murderer, guys. As deputy director, how is your relationship with Montague done? To be honest with you, Mr. Holmes, it could have been better. You see, every Tuesday he would carry out his inspection of the gardens, but it was solely to make an impression, a great pretense that he cared at all. He would give out absurd orders, ignoring anyone else's opinion. He would then disappear for the rest of the week. He was what some might call a man of action. I'd say rather he was overzealous and chaotic. So after all, it was no wonder, perhaps, that he ended up like that, if you take into consideration his kind of lifestyle. You mentioned that Mr. Dunn led a particular lifestyle. Well, it's no secret that he enjoyed uh, celebrating, shall we say? He was a member of the London Smart Set. He was famous for it. That and... And... He had an eye for the ladies, to put it mildly, Mr. Holmes. With that face? Okay. Mr. Hamish, can you tell us who holds the keys to the locked greenhouses? That would be Albert. This money Mr. talks. Son. Yes, Albert keeps all the keys, and one can only imagine why. What do you mean? Well, he was never interested in Kew Gardens before. And now, all of a sudden, he is trying to act as if he owns the place. I think he wants to take over the management here. <laughs> He'd do better to leave that to me. He has no experience. No, none at all. What is your opinion of Albert as a student of botany? He's useless. I often tell him so, and I can only give him cleaning tasks. Botany is not his life's work, and his father well knew it. He was furious about it. He was? Oh, yes. He forced his son to work here. And he never missed an opportunity to criticize him publicly. Are you able to elaborate on that? Well, for example, with our last exhibition here, Mr. Dunn had Albert make a presentation speech. But then, while the lad was speaking, Mr. Dunn interrupted him, asking him difficult questions, making him look like a failure. It was with the intention of making a fool of him, Mr. Holmes. That must have been terribly humiliating. Yes, he was crushed, and he had to leave. Everybody was making fun of poor Albert. That is, except for Miss Margaret White, who is such a nice lady and who always takes pity on Albert. Hang on. I need, I need to do something very, very important. Oh, that's so much better. You mentioned a Miss White. Would you tell us more about her? She is a student who works here part-time. She is quite charming indeed. She possesses a great talent for botany. You should take a look at some of her experiments that she carried out in the laboratory. Ah, oh, if only she were not so naive. 
Why naive? The way she used to flutter around Mr. Montague Dunn. And he... Why, he couldn't help but be flattered by all her attention. How could an intelligent woman such as Miss White not see through his game? I can only scratch my head and wonder. You tell me, Mr. Hamish, do you grow the more deadly variety of plant here? You mean insectivorous? Yes, but nothing larger than that. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Is it still locked? Locked. Damn right. I like the color of this blazer. Or the suit jacket, or the fuck you want to call it. Alright, talk. Who is Miss Margaret White? Ah, oh, she is the young lady who studies with me. She visits here sometimes to help out with the greenhouses. In fact, she should be here today. She wanted to work at the seed house. That's the small greenhouse across from the large glass house. We noticed that a part of the colonial collection has been cleared. Ah, at the moment I'm just dealing with the storage room. I don't know much about the other rooms. I imagine that your relationship with your father may have been a strained one. Yes. I cannot say that he was a kind man. For he never listened to me at all. He forced me to work here. I wonder if I should now, do a speed run. After his death, I would suck so much. Pondering it over. Perhaps he wasn't so wrong about me after all. I have to follow his path. And I have to manage Kew Gardens. What well, makes it hard to run? I can be as good as any other who works here. Would you please tell us about Martin Hamish, the deputy director? Well, I have to tell you that Mr. Hamish is not and has never been the deputy director of Kew Gardens. My father would not have tolerated it. Indeed. Well, that is most interesting. He told us that he was. Yes, because he believes that the management should be passed down to him now that my father is dead. But in actual fact, Mr. Hamish only has the honor of being the garden's longest serving employee. In fact, if we are to think logically at all, it should be me who takes over the management of Kew Gardens. Do you not have a good relationship with Mr. Hamish? I suppose so. But we have very little in common. <laughs> Mr. Hamish loves his plants and Kew Gardens, and I cannot say that I share his passion. I see. And how was his relationship with your father? Oh, he hated my father. It was obvious. He would be furious whenever my father boasted of Kew Gardens in the newspapers or at conferences. He was convinced that my father was stealing all of the credit for himself. But my father treated Mr. Hamish in the same way as he treated anyone. Dismissively. With indifference. That reminds me a little bit of um, a little comic I found on Reddit one time. Uh, where is it? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I found it. Okay. <laughs> I was very impressed with your interview skills. Unfortunately, we're looking for a candidate with more of a... How do I put this? Blood relation to someone who works here. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> love this comic. Do you hold the keys to all of these locked doors? Yes, you can have them. But I cannot give you the keys to the cloakroom. The employee's effects are private. I am sure you understand. The only you, way man. that I would assume it's Albert soon. is if, like, we find a plant that can make you cry or some shit. Right? Water. Um, where was that one girl that he said Dry should be here? Tropics. Seed house, right. Oh. Look, Holmes, this charming lady must be Miss White. She's entering the seed house. Uh, 
open. Very enthusiastic. Good day to you, miss. You have some very beautiful plants here. Oh, why, thank you, sir. And good day to you, too. But... Oh, I, I do beg your pardon. My name is Dr. John Watson. This is my good friend, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. I am honored to make your acquaintance, gentlemen. My name is Margaret White. Excuse me, but are you Sherlock Holmes, the great detective? Yes, I am. I actually like this voice. I like this accent. Here at Kew Gardens. It's the only, it's the only voice I've ever that I've listened, heard so far that I don't mind hearing. <laughs> and before it's Chie's voice actor or some bullshit. <laughs> Okay. Literally, the marriage status of someone has not mattered yet. But we keep on pointing out that they're not married. Uh, Margaret White, I think? Yes, a theft of plants. I know it's White. Took place here a few days ago it's the last the name. Recent exhibition. Oh, oh, yes, of course. I quite forgot about that. Oh, it's quite understandable that you might forget about the theft of the plants, miss, after the tragedy that took place here. Yes. The director was a truly good man. It is such a terrible misfortune. Would you happen to know why part of the colonial collection was cleared? No. I have never been there. Do you work here? Part-time only. I am a biology student at the London University. I attend the same classes as the son of Mr. Montague Dunn. That is how I found my chance to work here for part of my thesis, you see. It is a great honor. Thank God. <laughs> how well did you know Mr. Montague Dunn? He was a master, a great leader. I saw him almost as a spiritual father. He had an exceptional nature? Oh, yes, indeed. He was always so active and so optimistic and very nice to me. Although he could behave harshly towards his son. What? Why so? He loved his son dearly and wanted the very best for him. It made him extremely demanding. Albert is oh. naturally shy. Oh, gotcha. Perfect. Sorry. I, I, now, okay, I know what you're talking about. Most the one with the, the unsymmetrical face. Are locked. Do you have a key to this room? Oh, yes. Albert gave me a set of duplicate keys. He agreed I might carry out my studies without disturbing him. It is only temporary. Uh, thank you, miss. None of the three people who work at Kew Gardens know why half of the colonial collection was cleared. So, someone is lying. It is obvious. You're saying that out loud? <laughs> She's right here. Kew Gardens is such an exciting place. Wouldn't you agree? He's fucking just said that out loud. What should we do next, Holmes? I mean, what should I do next? Let's be real here. You're just spectating at this point. Thank goodness. It's a nice breeze in here. There we go. These leather gloves are new and of good quality. They do not appear to have been used. A book about ships. Nothing at all to do with plants. Materials for college study. They belong to Albert. This place serves as Albert's office. But From here, we are unable to see the interior of the Colonial Collection Room. 
This is one of the outlets of the ventilation system. I think that's everything. You got All right, we got more looking to do. Nursery time. Locked. What are you talking about? I just opened the door. Show me. The seeds of plant species are stored here. What should I just realized why it's called a nursery. The hair color is cool. The bangs are fucked. <laughs> Yo, dude, I gotta... It's unfortunate. <laughs> it is a bust of Montague Dunn. Oh. I am curious if the marble that we found oh, yeah. will fit this place. Here it is. The marble fragment that we found in the colonial collection room is what they have in common. These young plants must be delicate if they are kept in the nursery. Watson, why are you... Can you just go home? We can see the interior of the colonial collection room from this window. We can see I'm Trying to look at these fucking posters. Show me a poster. This poster is for an exhibition that Martin Hamish was directing. But it had nothing to do with Kew Gardens. This certificate belongs to Martin Hamish. He won a horticultural competition. Ah, oh, fuck. A thesis written by Martin Hamish. A glasses case. It is empty. This area serves as Martin Hamish's office. This is one of the outlets of the ventilation system. An award presented to Martin Hamish for Best Grower of the Year. That was my title. A master's degree diploma. It belongs to Martin Hamish. There was a bottle here. It left behind a trace of the substance that pervaded the laboratory. Gold dust? Good heavens. What's it doing here? The gold is almost immune to chemical attacks, so it may be a valuable auxiliary for various experiments. But why would anyone perform such experiments in a botanical garden? Several drops of the substance were spilled. Someone carried this bottle around. 
several drops of the substance. The bottle is no longer here, but it is possible to detect a faint scent. We need a good nose. Time to get Toby. I read that as a pornograph. Used for voice recording. Remarkable. Yes, this is quite a modern laboratory. I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. Study report by Martin Hamish. And it seems clear from these multiple experiments that plants to respond to their environment and have a form of consciousness. Margaret White, February 1895. Report number 245. Study report. This is a table for experiments. It resembles my own. Only this one is kept in good order, Holmes. Eh, not really. Chemicals. A sufficient quantity for some serious experiments. What is this organization? University of Cambridge Botanical Section. A botany book. This student's book belongs to Albert. Pete Year. Yeah. It's unsightly. It appears as though the protective equipment is missing from here. No, not the PPE. Gloves. Waterproof aprons. Everything one might need for self-protection. Do they grow dangerous plants here? You already asked that question. Such masks are generally worn when dealing with toxic chemicals. Hmm. Locked. Locked. Holmes, Albert Dunn didn't give us the key to. It Chuck. does not matter. We will open it. Hell yeah, baby. I've. Oh man, I miss these. These are fun. Open. Nah, it's most likely nothing. It's probably another red herring. <laughs> Holy crap! Locker. Specialist articles on shipyards and ship construction. Albert Dunn has a great passion for shipbuilding and the sea. <laughs> you saw that too, right? A rejection letter from the British Royal Naval College. Royal Navy School of Nikos, Recruitment Center, London. Sir, it is my regret to inform you that despite your recent excellent, sorry, your excellent results within our entry examinations, <laughs> yeah, no kidding, we are unable to invite you into the Royal Navy School. Your father, Mr. Montague, Montague Dune, has expressed his intentions to entrust to you the dictation 
the dictatorship, the directorship of the Royal Botanical but Botanic Gardens in Q. And it is clear that he would not release you for an entire year for of naval training. Please accept all our best wishes for your future at Q Gardens. Yours very faithfully, J.M. Lemarchland, director. Well, we found we we found a, a, a motive for uh, for Albert. A picture of Miss White and Albert in front of the University of London. And they seem to get along. I'm leaning towards Margaret killing. I'm leaning towards Margaret killing Albert's father for Albert. Martin Hamish's locker. A review on rare and exotic plants. Martin Hamish has written several pieces. Mr. General Secretary, recent events unfolding at Kew Gardens oblige me, oblige me to renew my application for the management position. As I have stated already in my previous letters, I believe that no one is better suited for the post. While Mr. Montague Dune was alive, I understood your reservations to my suggestion. Your reasons were political, and I was happy to comply. But now the Kew Gardens lie in disorder. How can I stand by and allow it? How can I leave them in the hands of an inexperienced of inexperienced people with no motivation? I must urge you to cast your decision as a matter of urgency so that I may devote myself entirely to the noble task ahead and free my mind from this uncertainty. Oh really? Martin Hamish studied chemistry. Interesting. Father and I, Q Gardens. Miss White's locker. A vanity purse. It is of high quality. Well, now dump out all the change. Margaret, we were surprised to receive your letter. How could how could you think to ask us for money after all these years that have passed you sent that have passed since you left? And without any thought of us, you have never shared with us any detail of your success at the university, but you chose to do so now. We suppose you must be ashamed of us, for we are not from the same high class as your new friends. Yes, we are modest people, but you should learn to put your family first, as we at home have always done, and none of us ever compromise their reputation. As it appears, you have already with your employer, Mr. Dune. No, Margaret, it is you who make us feel ashamed, your parents. Dear Margaret, I know your financial troubles are overwhelming you at the present time. Please let me reassure you that I cannot permit you to remain in such dilemma. I was born of wealthy I was born of a wealthy family. I would consider it an honor if you might accept my help. Your devoted servant. Albert. Yo, I think Albert may have gotten a tier three sub to uh to Margaret's you know. Holy shit. These jewels must be worth a small fortune. A draft of the letter that Miss White sent to her parents. Dear mother and father, I am writing this letter with the reluctance to ask for your help. My studies and my housing costs have proven to be more expensive than I had anticipated. I fear, therefore, that I may not be able to manage in the long term. I know that we have had our disagreements in the past, but would you be so heartless as to allow your daughter to fail her studies due to lack of money? Margaret. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea to make this one a draft and not actually send that one. Apparently, Miss White is a capable student. What is that? Like... 
What are those in the distance? How big is that building over there? Those need to be smaller. Those are huge buildings. Move, Watson. Holy crap. Locked. Yeah, is it? Let me in. My dear friend, please allow me to express my disappointment upon reading your last letter. I am paying you to defend me, not accuse me. Kew Gardens is a royal institution. We are granted the great opportunity to travel the world and to save the most extraordinarily precious and rare species of plant. Our duty is to protect such species, and from those who might wish to use them for dubious purpose. This divine syndicate of whom you speak have no right to hold such precious plants. Remember the case of June 14th, 1889? So, I must respectfully ask you once again not sorry, to notarize the permissions of these plants on behalf of Kew Gardens. The documents were sent to you on Monday. P.S. See you in Boodles on Tuesday, as always. Mr. Dune, we must ask you for the last time for the return of our dear sisters. You do not have any right to hold them in prison. They do not belong to you. Your so-called permissions are wholly false. You are hiding behind lies. The lie we need not elaborate that was reported in the to the in the press as the as the case of June 14th, 1889. What you have done is quite abhorrent. Be very sure that we shall never abandon our family members. We trusted you and regret having done so. The Divine Syndicate. I suggest that we don't tell Miss Margaret White about this document. Debt of Miss Margaret White to Mr. Montan Dune. Montagidi. Rental of a suite of rooms at Oxford Street. An educational scholarship at London University. Credits opened at Hamilton. Hey, dude. You know, I didn't know Hamilton was one of the longest running sh Broadway shows. Oh, my God. <laughs> Radigan House Tailors at, and at Bayard and Sons Jewelry. Interesting. Margaret White's studies and social situation were completely dependent upon... yeah. My dearest Margaret, following our last conversation, I believe it might be better if you vacate your position here at Kew Gardens. As you pointed out quite bluntly, you are no longer in need of my support. 
you are quite able to stand up for yourself in this world as you say. Well, I give you back your freedom and wish you nothing but good luck. Newspapers discussing Kew Gardens. The Kew Gardens team are pleased to announce the successful production of a new variety of barley, one that retains a complete resistance to the cold. They have named it the Siberian Barley. The Mr. Martin, ha Mr. Martin Hamish, the proud cultivator of the graft, will hold a press conference next Monday morning upon this very subject. This is what Miss White and Mr. Dune had recent disagreement. Montague Dune was planning to release Miss White from her position at Kew Gardens. A photograph of Montague Dunn and Reynold Hamish. French wine. A remarkable vintage. Champagne. Montague Dunn had good taste. Mr. Hamish. Was someone from your family connected with Kew Gardens? Family? No. I'm the only one with a passion for botany. Um, excuse me, my friend. Explain the photo. I do not think so. This photograph of you and your father at Kew Gardens suggests the opposite. <sighs> but you have no right to. Do tell us more about your father. He was, indeed, the greatest botanist of his time in the British Empire. He worked together with Montague Dunn until the end of his life. If you ask and I have to answer, this, this evidence will be dismissed. Did he get dismissed. on well with Mr. Dunn? No, I couldn't say that. They expanded Kew Gardens together, that was all. And it was all my father's work. But Dunn always lived the high life. So Mr. Dunn was not helping your father? Oh, yes. He provided the financial support. And as far as he was concerned, that fulfilled his role. But the worst of it was... He declared himself as the master of Kew Gardens. Fame meant nothing to my father. So it was easy for Mr. Dunn to take all the credit. There is a bust of Montague Dunn in the nursery. A bust? Oh, that old thing. Further proof of that outrageous ego of his. But why in that room, in particular? Oh, I, I don't know. It has always been there. Um, excuse me. Explain the rock. It is strange, because I recovered a fragment of the bust inside the Colonial Collection Room. Really? Oh, well, so I am mistaken. It ought to have been removed during the cleanup. This room is so small. Hmm. Do you know who moved it? I have no idea. Surely Mr. Dunn requested it. Do you have any more questions like this? Because fragments of rock are not my responsibility. Evidently. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. I we get the feeling if Martin killed Dune, Dunn, uh, he wouldn't be shitting on him this hard. I perceive that you are passionate about the Royal Navy. Passionate? No, not really. I like ships, that is all. Explain I the application. Sure you do not seem to be so interested in plants. It's difficult, that's all. My future is here. It has never been about anything else. Got him. And yet, I know that the Royal Naval College rejected your application. Basically revealing we broke into his locker. They say. Yes, that's correct. And in fact, my father was strongly against the idea. He did his best to ruin my plans. Although I almost did succeed. But my dreams were shattered, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, young man. 
We shall see you again soon. Albert had a motive to kill his father, Montague Dune. Dunn. Dunn had thwarted Albert's dream of joining the Royal Navy by killing his father. Albert could have had his revenge and eventually succeeded his father's place. Yeah, but he doesn't care, but we'll just do that for now. Martin Hamish had a motive. He believed that he and his father's lives had been ruined by Dunn, who had taken credit for all of their work. Hamish wished to take over the directorship of Kew Gardens. But he knew that would not be possible with Dunn still alive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just mashing X. Oh, we still need to get Toby. I see if there's more dialogue with Margaret. Oh, Mr. Montague Dunn. No, there isn't. Is so we also need to hit up the archives like fucking crazy, apparently. Oh, how'd this go? Thank you. <laughs> Who the fuck stabs their letters? Mr. Holmes, I am writing to inform you that the affair at Abbey Grange, which took place almost half a year ago now, still resonates deeply in high society and remains a subject of much gossip. This case's romantic background has attracted many suitors who show willing to take shelter and take pity on Lady Brackenstall, but to this date, she still serves her sentence with her maid, Teresa, and has rejected all offers of help. To be truthful, I suspect that the true motivation of these suitors may be may well be related to Sir Eustace's title and money. What do you think, Mr. Holmes? And sincerely yours, Inspector Lestrade. Yeah, I feel nothing for these people. Call me, call me a monster, but I don't give a fuck. That These plants have a certain toxicity in common, more or less variable. Uh, Diania carnivorous. Da, 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 only the first three can be dangerous to humans, particularly Florum diabolica. Yeah, because it fucking has like the root word for diabolic in it, but only under very specific situations. Okay, Florum diabolica. The plant should react to a process of aggression against which it will issue deadly spores. Here it is. <laughs> symbol of broken flower pot found in the backyard. The symbol is not from Kew, Gar Kew Gardens. This glyph means divine, if I am not mistaken. The Divine Scholastic Syndicate for Vegetation Veneration. The members of the syndicate worship Trewan, the God King. They strive to obtain spiritual peace and release themselves from the material world. So generous donations are appreciated. Here it is. The Divine Syndicate is not a supplier to Kew Gardens. Besides, there is no address here. A 
A symbol on the flower pot found at Kew Gardens. The, the pots did not belong here. We are a premium supplier for all of your landscape, gardening, and timber requirements. Full range supply and delivery of sands, oil, soils, mulches, pots, and anything else you may need. Free Blurton Road, London. Seymour Garden, garden equipment and supplies. Yeah, Eighteen eighty nine. A member of the Divine Syndicate pressed a complaint against Kew Gardens and mentioned an old case that had been published in the newspapers. Scandal at Divine Syndicate Club. The Divine Syndicate Club, followers of the God King Trewan, situated on forty eight Gross Gross Venor Street, Charlton Road, Charlton Road. The protectors of plants and more particularly trees are currently the subject of an administrative investigation. The leaders of this organization are suspected of financial malfeasance. It may be that this investigation will lead to charges of ju judici judiciary. Meanwhile, many voices have risen high against this inspection and, sorry, denouncing the state. In fact, this private organization, which has given it, which has given as its goal, the defense and protection of nature, and which incorporates many persons of an influence, including political representatives of the opposition party. Here it is. And here is the Divine Syndicate's address. Perfect. It is time to find out what they have against Montague Dunn. Well, let's go get Toby. What are you doing? Someone should take Toby for a walk. Buddy, what are you Have looking you found at? Something interesting. Let's figure out what he's looking at. It's got to be something good now, right? Um. Watson. Come on, Toby. We have some work for you to do. Let us go to Kew Gardens. Let us take Toby to the laboratory. He will pick up the scent of this mysterious substance. Search, Toby. Search. Yeah, Toby, get fucking looking. All right. Are you going to open the door or are you just going to stand there? Good work. What the fuck? It it stops right here. Oh, here we go. Congratulations, Toby. Now let us see what you have found. This is the bottle that was used in the laboratory. It was buried here. This is gold, isn't it? There is still some liquid remaining in the bottle. Oh, that's supposed to be liquid. Gold flakes. Okay, so it is tiny gold. Tiny caterpillar. Not surprising to see one in a garden, but at the bottom of a bottle. Very nice. Hey, Toby. Brave Toby. The best nose in the British Empire. If I go there, Toby will wait for me in the cab. 
I don't need Toby anymore. This place is beautiful, Holmes. Holy crap. Its atmosphere is remarkably soothing. Let us find someone who could help us. I can't escape Weeb. Sorry. Officially a JRPG. Fragments of a flower pot. It fell down here. The Q Garden's symbol. Oh man. A fragment of a flower pot. Dude, Sekiro 2 is looking fucking f great. Good day to you, sir. Uh, my name is Shul. I am exalting the sap. A while can you wait? From the trace of elements, and moreover, from the quality of the ambient geotropism, it depends. Therefore, please mind my gravitropism. Its balance. Do not disturb. Disturbed is most definitely the word. There. Completed is the symbiosis. Welcome, you are. To introduce myself, I shall. I am the Green Grand Mystic. The... the Green Grand Mystic? Himself? This is me. Who am I speaking to? <laughs> we are two gentlemen who are extremely interested in the uh, vegetation philosophy that is advocated by this establishment. Listening to you, I am. What are you fucking Yoda? Like, <laughs> goodness, the mystic himself. We should like to take a look around, to immerse ourselves in the wisdom that emanates from here. Hmm. It is a school of anastomosis. Very important note to take. <laughs> for vegetation veneration and meditation. Are well, I mean, he could not like partake in that tradition of putting on a ring. Only true devotees, those whose hearts are ready to spermatophize in sharing of knowledge, are permitted to physically enter our vegetable kingdom and its wisdom. And to be permitted, you must earn it. Yes. Do you have friends at Kew Gardens? None. Not worthy there. Uh, how about uh, you explain the symbols? Nevertheless, we have seen Kew Gardens flower pots in your yard. How could they happen to be there? What? Our sacred place you permitted yourself to search. Sacrilege. Bro, you had him oh, right really? out there. There was a theft of plants at Kew Gardens a matter of days ago. And we believe the pots we found here may be connected with it. You hid them in your front fucking yard. Were you involved? No. Those plants were ours. They had stolen them from us. How so? Uh, their director. Dump, I believe. Done. Yes, that's, that's what I said. He borrowed from us three of our sisters for the exhibition at his green fly infested gardens. But he never gave them back to us. Excuses and imbecility. So we went in and saved them. I see. So if you stole those rare plants from them, then it means... Ah, I get it. Bravo, Holmes. I think the case is solved. No, we did not steal. We saved. 
Well, as a matter of fact, we were unable to find our three plants. I beg your pardon. And yet, you took all of the exotic plants from the stand. They had disappeared. It was the least we could do. They stole our sisters, and so we stole theirs. You would fucking the botany industry is cutthroat. Green Grand Mystic, we are ready to become devotees and gain access to your temple. What is the name of our Lord, our God King? Uh, Trema. Our God King's name is Triwan, Green Grand Mystic. Oh la, good, good, I like you. Here is the holy key to the is it? place. Holy donation, can you make whenever you so wish? Thank you so much. I pray you to taste our fertilizer substance. From the burdens of life, it helps to free. Uh, but of course. Raw sap, it is called. It is near the entrance. Well, we will leave you to your meditation. After murder, the killers may ha may be those who stole the exotic plants, including the deadly species, from the last exhibition at Kew Gardens. Sect stole everything. The Divine Syndicate stole all plants from the exhibition, including the deadly species. They could have used them in order to murder Montague Dune. Done. Syndicate stole all but the deadly plants. We can already call it. Sorry, I only listen to I only listen to sixteen bit music, so my my. The list of plant friends and benefactors, lawyers, well-known manufacturers, political leaders. Osmosis and photosynthesis. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. This must be Triwan, the Divine Syndicate's god. This door is locked, but I can try to open it. In front of everyone. Hell yeah, dude, this is fun. It's my favorite minigame.
I like the lock picking challenges. They're fun. These instruments are used for smoking opium. That would be enough to perform the most difficult of chemical experiments. This cabinet is full of chemicals. They are the same as the ones we found in the laboratory at Kew Gardens. A vast amount of opium. Praise the grand tree. Praise. That should be the raw sap that the green grand mystic spoke of. Our take? Hmm. It is rather delicious and of an excellent quality. My word, Holmes. Their sap is like a form of cocaine. How you doing, Holmes? <laughs> Caterpillars, they are raised as food for certain plants. Let's take them. Thank you for the caterpillars. These three plants are identical to the ones shown at the exhibition. I shall take them. How the fuck are you gonna hide these? A tropical plant. Nothing of interest. A tropical... A tropical... Tro this green, grand, mystic fellow seems rather suspicious, Holmes. We should search every inch of this place. Yeah. Dr. Watson is my fucking pack mule butt. <laughs> This ca this ca a prison wallet. Never heard that one before. Praise the grand tree. Praise it. Praise it. Praise the Lord. Follow my path, and better you will fear. Are you aware of the Divine Syndicate? The Divine what? Is this a joke? No, I am quite serious. What a ridiculous name. Anyway, I have never heard of this syndicate. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Tell me. Have you ever heard of the Divine Syndicate? No, I cannot say that I have. Huh. Thank you, young man. Not we the responses I soon. was expecting.
Brave Toby. Uh, let me check. It would appear no. I don't know why Toby isn't gone yet. The Divine Syndicate. Does that name mean anything to you, by any chance? Not at all. But it is a very pretty name. Uh, thank you, miss. We're getting fuck all, dude. Let us determine just what we have found here. Oh Let God! Let us pour liquid from the bottle into a test tube to perform an analysis. Yes. This is the bottle that we found hidden at Kew Gardens. Let us use a pipette to take a sample of the liquid and fill a test tube. This is... Sorry. What do you call it? Pipette? Pipe hoot? Pipe butt? Colorless, water-based liquid. Indeed. Inhale. That's Quite safe. A strong floral aroma. Holmes, what are you doing? It has a bitter taste. What if it's poisonous? Did you ever see poison stored in enormous jars like that? Anyway, there is a doctor nearby. So, what do you think it is? It is some kind of organic compound. Let us vaporize the liquid and see what happens. Oh, sorry. Nice flame PNG. Oh. Small colorless crystals. Colorless, tiny crystals that are soluble in water, with a floral smell and a bitter taste. Watson, could you pass me that small bottle, please? Of course. Here you are. Uh, Holmes, do you know what it is? Wagner's reagent. There was a label on the bottle that you passed to me. No, Holmes, I meant the bottle that we found. Let me add the reagent and see if there is any sediment, and then I shall tell you. I need to take a pipette. Fine. Red sediment, just as I suspected. This Oops, I this fucking is probably a fertilizer. Someone was carrying out unusual experiments. I actually skipped the dialogue. In laboratory.
set up the alkaloid from a chemical laboratory in the caterpillars and perform the experiment with the deadly plants. No. According to the deadly plants information, in order to perform our experiment, we will need fertilizer and food. Caterpillars should do nicely. Yes, I um I have caterpillars. According to the deadly Yep, I have caterpillars. According to the I have them right here. According to the deadly plants information, according I guess I need to go get fertilizer from somewhere. A ventilation system. It should regulate the temperature of the staff buildings. A water tank. I need fertilizer. Where the fuck can I find fertilizer? Oh, Mr. Acolyte most likely is unstable that and that is why there is a quantity of gold dust to prevent contaminate. Okay. Where the fuck do I find fertilizer? Excuse me, but I have to tidy up this room. Oh, Watson! Plants were here. All of them were stolen. Here we go. There's fertilizer, but not the fertilizer that. Sherlock wants. Maybe.
follow my path, and better you will feel. This substance is an alkaloid, the same as in the bottle we found in the bushes at Kew Gardens. Perfect, Watson. We can begin our experiment. Wait, what was Watson I doing? That one of these plants would be capable of releasing a toxic vapor. I need to find out exactly how it could be done. I shall begin now. Watson, if you are at all optimistic to have dinner this evening, then I'd recommend that you put on the gas mask. It's obviously this one. This is a strain. It appears to open after being soaked with alkaloid. Jesus! It closed again. I believe I saw a small cloud of gas. I wonder what secrets this plant is hiding. Perhaps if we agitate it to a greater that's not, extent, that's, that's, whilst uh, it is opened, it will reveal a little more. You want me to hear you? appears to have fallen inactive. My word, it shot a spike at me after I stabbed it with a pin. I imagined that its reaction would be ferocious if I increased the strength of my attack. My It appears to have fallen inactive after being disturbed. No reaction. This plant becomes inactive after... This plant becomes inactive. the behavior of predators utterly fascinating how interesting what a strong and effective defensive mechanism uh. i am interested in what might occur if the prickly plant should shoot at it It appears to open. It closed again. I believe I saw a small cloud of gas. I wonder what secrets this plant is hiding. Perhaps if we agitate it to a greater extent whilst it is opened, it will reveal a little more. I am interested in what might occur 
if the prickly plant should shoot at it. Say no more. It appears to open. This plant seems to have had no reaction. This plant. My word. My word. It shot a spike at me after I stabbed it with a pin. I imagine that it... Toxic gas with spores. Extraordinary. The plants would be capable of killing only if they were directly next to the victim and stimulated at precisely the right moment. Let us take our caterpillars to the colonial collection room. We may see things more clearly there. It is too early, Watson. Our suspects will be there. Let us investigate Kew Gardens one more time and ask some questions. Yeah, I ain't stupid, Ohio. I'm just selectively <sighs> retarded. <laughs> What the fuck? Blackboard? Shady because I don't know what to do. You are now chatting with Wyatt H. Thank you for contacting Student Services Center. Thank you. Can you teach me? My future is your hand, please. Welcome. The fuck? Wait, you work for Blackboard? Oh my god, dude, you work for Satan. And my controller is being fucky wucky. Hang on. There we go.
Um, hey, it's still not working. That should work now. Yes. Wait, so you have to like deal with like just college students all day? Oof. I guess there are worse fates. Can you tell me if you saw Mr. Montague Dunn on the day of his death? Yes, of course. I met him, and we went to see Albert, his son, at around half past nine. He appeared quite calm. Gotcha. What were you doing on the morning of the accident? After paying multiple visits to Albert... So basically you deal with perpetually Mike, confused then people. Then I returned to my desk to complete some paperwork. Suddenly, I observed that Mr. Dunn was not feeling well, so I ran immediately to fetch Albert. I clearly remember that it was around half past ten, for I was late that morning. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. To be fair, they don't do a good job at teaching people how financial aid works. Your father's death does seem highly suspicious. What were your movements here on that day? Suspicious? Well, I was working in the seed house, taking care of a uh, Lysip, but something, or, or Lear, uh, Pontus, or... No, wait. Ah, oh, these Latin names. And I spent so many hours trying to memorize them. Did you see your father that day? Yes. He came here with Mr. Hamish for his weekly visit. There was nothing unusual about that. And then? Nothing. They stepped out to the backyard. It was perhaps 20 minutes before 10 o'clock. Then about 10 minutes later, I saw my father heading for the dry tropics room while Mr. Hamish returned here. And Mr. Hamish and Miss White, what were they both doing that morning? Mr. Hamish visited me a couple of times. I also saw him returning from talking with Miss White, and that was at 10 minutes past 10. But then he ran back here to me to tell me that my father was feeling unwell. We hurried across to the water lily room, and I found my father lying dead on the floor. Oh, my God. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. So I don't think it can be Elbert, because I don't think Elbert really knows plants enough to know how to kill someone with one. I'm leaning towards Miss White more than anyone else right now. Can you tell me what Mr. Dunn was doing upon the day of his death? I can, but there is nothing very special to say. I was in the laboratory when I saw Mr. Dunn heading towards me. Tuesday is the day of his weekly visit. It was supposed to be at nine, but he was ten minutes late, as usual. And then? Well, he came in to say good morning. Then I saw him spend two or three minutes by the plants outside the laboratory. After that, he ran out in the direction of the nursery, where Mr. Hamish was working. He was always in a rush during the inspection, you see. I would pity anyone who stood in his way. And that was the last time you saw him? Yes. I stayed in the laboratory until 20 minutes to 11, when I heard the cries of Albert and Mr. Hamish from the large glass house. I joined them as soon as I could, for I knew that something must be very wrong. What exactly were you doing in the laboratory? I was recording an experiment for my thesis. I only stopped my work once when Mr. Hamish visited me briefly around 10 o'clock. You say you were recording an experiment when the tragedy occurred. Might I listen to the role? Oh, certainly. Please do. You will find it in the laboratory. It is number 320. Uh, thank you, miss. Everyone has gone, Holmes. The way is clear.
When Montague Dunn was standing close by the plants, the caterpillars were released and caused the deadly spores to activate. Panicking and likely already half asphyxiated, Montague Dunn started back and knocked over the bust. He rushed to the door, but it was locked. He had to force it open with his shoulder. We already know the outcome. Montague Dunn collapsed and died not far from the pool. Well, it is time to perform our experiment on the ventilation system. The caterpillars could only fall from the ventilation duct. Our caterpillars are in place. I'll activate the ventilation system so that they fall down. Watson, stay here and observe. All right, stand please. right there. That shit is really burning. Before starting the engine, the power is on. The engine can... The ventilation system is working. Good God, dude, there's so much fucking running in this area. How'd it go? Now we need to see if we can activate the fans from Mr. Hamish's and Oh! This ventilation fan is working. Let us see if I can activate the other one. Perfect. Now I just need to find Watson to check the result. It works perfectly, Holmes. Bravo. Now, if you could just help me to get rid of these caterpillars. You're the idiot that stood Perfect. underneath the vent. Now we know how Why'd you the stand there? of Montague Dunn was carried out by activating both Albert's and Mr. Hamish's fans. But only from Mr. Hamish's workplace would it be possible to see when Montague Dunn entered the colonial collection room. I don't think it was the other organization, right? Mar 
Martin Hamish had the opportunity to stimulate the deadly plants in the colonial collection room. As a biologist, he would have understood the technicality of how to do this. And Martin Hamish could be the killer. He had the opportunity to steal the Divine Syndicate's plants and stimulate them from his workplace directly after he had locked Montague Dune inside of the collection room. I think he's lack of experience. Um, what the fuck? Let's go to Scotland Yard. Yeah, but I, I don't think the I know I'm pretty confident about um, the other organization and Albert not being involved. Locked. Where the fuck am I supposed to go? I must admit it would be rather. Mr. Holmes. There we go. Jesus. I thought I walked up to the door. Didn't give me the option. I believe that Martin Hamish is guilty of the murder of Montague Dunn. Aha! I knew it. I'll send the lads around to arrest him. Very good. I shall wait to hear from you. Doesn't give me an option to do anything else. I'm guessing this is scripted. Inspector, I came here as quickly as I could. Martin Hamish is in the large glass house. There's no need to hurry. So what if we did this? Yeah, like, we only have the option to say yes to- yeah, yeah, so it's... I think it's gonna make us do this route for now. In the large greenhouse. All right. Holmes, my God. Yes, we found him like that. Our messing around with the ventilation system didn't go unnoticed. Mr. Hamish realized that we knew. Inspector, could you arrange the body, please? I should like to examine it. The fuck is reserve? Over here. Oh, hi. Is 
Life has become a living hell. I find it unbearable. Dunn deserved to die, but I cannot forgive myself for having his blood upon my hands. We Hamishes seem to have always fallen victim to our circumstance, and I find myself to be no exception. I must atone, and I shall do so here and now. Farewell. Holmes, his left shoe is unique. This anomaly is often a characteristic of... A club foot. Bravo, Watson. That is the key element of this case. The mark around the neck is very visible. He died instantly. He was marked aside from club foot and tibial just... Okay. What does the club foot have to do with fucking anything? He was able to run due to the... Yeah, and his club foot. Therefore, we should find out if he had sufficient time to lock the door to the Colonial Museum, Colonial Collection Room, and activate the ventilation system. Did he have an accomplice? Oh, now we're getting interesting. Gotcha. Discuss the possible impact of new clues found. Okay. Something about this rings very oddly. Why do you say that, Mr. Holmes? Why? Because of Mr. Hamish's club foot. Oh, I deserve to be kicked from here to Charing Cross. I should have noticed it. But, Mr. Holmes, I can't see why. No, I don't suppose you do. You must recall that Mr. Dunn was locked inside the Colonial Collection Room by the murderer. If it was Mr. Hamish, he would have had to run up to his workplace to trigger the fan situated above it, taking into consideration the condition of his foot. Well, it is still possible. Perhaps, but it is rather strange that such a person as Mr. Hamish decided to base his plan on the speed of his gait. You mean to say that somebody helped him? So the suicide is questionable? Correct. Mr. Hamish accuses only himself in his letter, and so the investigation stops. Possibly an accomplice, then? That idea had not occurred to me, Mr. Holmes. I Has any idea occurred idea, to you? Inspector, thanks to the testimony that we have collected, we are able to rebuild the events as they took place that day. With a timeline, such as we did in the Jack the Ripper case. Precisely. The map at the entrance of Kew Gardens should help us with our timeline. Let us analyze the facts and statements so that we may recreate the events of that morning. Fuck. Martin Hamish and Montague Dunn went to meet Albert at the seat house around half past nine. It was around 20 minutes to 10 when Hamish and Montague Dunn went out to the backyard. After 10 minutes, Dunn rec recommended his inspection. So, 20 minutes to 10 when Hamish and Montague Dunn went out to the backyard. Oops. Ten minutes after, Dunn recommended his inspection, re recommenced his inspection, and entered the dry tropics room. Hamish returned to the seed house. Martin Hamish had con had a conversation with Miss White at 10 o'clock. Miss White was in the laboratory until Oh, you play the Jack the Ripper case? Cool. Dude, the fucking images from that from that murder are insanely hard to look at. Hamish ran to Albert as soon as he observed that Montague Dunn was unwell, which was around 1030.
You observe Hamish returning from visiting Miss White at 10 minutes past 10. Let us summarize. Montague Dunn was poisoned inside the Colonial Collection Room. He forced open the door, which means that someone locked him inside there at 10.20. Martin Hamish was last seen at 10.10. This means that he has approximately 10 minutes to lock the door of the Colonial Collection Room. Given that he was club-footed, it is doubtful. Albert also has 10 minutes to lock the door of the Colonial Collection Room, which is quite enough time. Miss White was last seen at 10 o'clock, which means that she had approximately 20 minutes to lock the door. More than enough time. Perfect, Watson. Now, let us ascertain who assisted Martin Hamish in killing Montague Dunn. Albert is not involved. Martin Hamish and Albert are not accomplices. It is unlikely that Albert would have the opportunity, and ten minutes around ten minutes would have not been enough to lock the door to the colonial collection room. Albert was Martin Hamish's accomplice. Ten minutes would have been enough time for him to follow Montague Dunn and lock the door in order in order that Martin might activate the ventilation system. Miss White had twenty minutes. It would have been It would have been enough to trap Montague Dunn. She could have locked the door and alerted Martin Hamish to activate the ventilation system. Martin Hamish and Miss White are not accomplices. It's unlikely that White would have had the opportunity. And Thomas would not have been enough to lock the door. To, I mean, it would have been. What if... What if Albert is involved? But he didn't know. Yeah. Martin Hamish committed the murder alone. He loathed Montague Dunn because of his treatment of Hamish's father. Hamish had enough time to lock Dunn in and activate the ventilation fan from his workplace. I, my game crashed. Exactly. I feel like if Albert wasn't involved, though, it would have been like, oh, yeah, then uh, then Hamish came by and told me to turn on the ventilation system, right? I feel like he would have said that if he wasn't involved in, in, a, in like, a unknowing sense. He would have told us. Exactly. Albert and Martin Hamish accomp Hamish's accomplices in killing Montague Dunn. Humiliated repeatedly by his father and denied his dreams, Albert resolved to aid and abet the murderer. Albert Dunn killed his father in collaboration with Hamish, citing years of humiliation and frustration at his father's de 
dictating his life, and we conclude that Albert is a cold-blooded murderer who deserves life in prison. Killing done in collaboration with Hamish was the only way to end years of torment and humiliation. We can allow the police to believe it was Hamish alone so Albert can go free, but he must live with his conscience. Okay, so we can't choose the he was unknowing option. Can they both be accomplices? No. <laughs> Margaret White and Martin Hamish accomplice in killing Montague Dunn. Her professional ambition and personal situation had been damaged by the breakup with Dunn. Miss White is a dangerous woman, very capable of carrying out an elaborate murder of monetary gain. She flirted with El Dune's son, Dunn's son, Albert, and later pushed ha Martin Hamish to, to a suicide. She deserves the rope. Dude, Final Fantasy cutscenes are fucking amazing. Miss White is a desperate woman in debt, resigned to consorting with wealthy gentlemen. When Dunn cast her aside, she killed him in desperation. Hamish tried to save her. She deserves a second chance. Bullshit. What if, is there an option to make the other organization an accomplice? I heard across the water lily room, I found my father lying on the floor dead. Here it is. These plants, classified as shrubs or grasses, have adapted to their arid environment due to a system of underground roots. This recording seems very long. It is unnecessary to listen to all of it. Miss White was in the laboratory, as she told us.
Okay, so that was a big fat nothing burger. Um, This is to say, it was a laboratory when I saw Mr. Dunn heading towards me. So if she's in here, though, there is no way to activate the ventilation system from in here. You can only activate it over here. I mean, I, hang on. This, this is like this one in here. I can't find it. You know what I'm talking about, though. I think it's right out here. So why does the bust have the rock, right? We can see the interior of the colonial collection room from this window. I don't remember. There was, there was a chip of it inside of the colonial collection room. It was, he knocked it over apparently. Water. Uh, just a just a good old joke. <laughs> Audi. Um, this is really hard, because honestly, I'm leaning towards no accomplice. Is that is that bad? Yeah, I'm not sure about anything, though. Honestly, it, it even if you were walking, 10 minutes is plenty of time to get to that ventilation. <laughs> So if I understand what they're saying is, is that Hamish, Hamish and Dunn were walking with each other. They went through the nursery. They went through the seed house. And when they got here, I can add it to my list. That's for damn sure. I'll check it out. Hang on. Oh, actually, that way I don't forget it. I got it written down. We're all good. I'm really bad at remembering these things, so I write it down. Yeah, if we're going by video game logic, I guess he's I guess he's basically fucking army crawling his way. All right, so they split up here. Dry tropics. Right, and then he went through the dry tropics room.
I find it hard to believe that Albert is involved. I really wish there was a faster way to scroll. Can you tell me what Mr. Dunn was doing upon the day of his death? I can, but there is nothing very special to say. I was in the laboratory when I saw Mr. Dunn walk heading towards me. Tuesday is the day of his weekly visit. I was supposed to be at 9, but he was 10 minutes late as usual. Then, well, he came to say good morning. Then I saw him spend two or three minutes by the plants outside the laboratory. After that, he ran into the he ran out in the direction of the nursery where Mr. Hamish was working. He was in a rush during the inspection. You see, I would pity anyone who stood in his way. And that was the last time you saw him. Yes, I say, I say laboratory until ten forty when I heard the cries from of Albert and Mr. Hamish from the large glass house. I joined them as soon as I could, for I knew that something must be very wrong. What exactly were you doing in the laboratory? I was recording an experiment for my thesis. I only stopped once Mr. Hamish visited me briefly around 10 o'clock. You say you were recording an experiment when the tragedy occurred. May I listen to the role? Now I don't think it's her. Because, like, that role almost gives her an alibi, right? Yeah. Also, Albert was in a position to see, right? Hang on. It's like, it's been so many hours trying to memorize them. Did you see your father that day? Yes, he came here with Mr. Hamish. For his weekly visit, there was nothing unusual about that. And then, uh, nothing. They stepped out of the back to the backyard. It was perhaps 9.40. Then about 10 minutes later, I saw my father heading for the dry tropics room. So at 9.50. And Mr. Hamish, Mr. White, what were they doing that morning? Mr. Hamish visited me a couple of times. I also saw him returning from when he was talking with Mr. Mrs. White. as at about 10.10. I wonder if that shave mark where you got cut, right? I wonder if that's important or if that's just supposed to make him seem like childish. Oh yeah, you're right. He did say that he ran. Uh. <laughs> okay, if we say that he had no accomplice and the game was like, you idiot, he can't run, then we can cite our reason. <laughs> Pretty easily. Then he ran back here to me to tell me my father was feeling unwell. Ah, uh, dude.
Yes, but that's not my fault. <laughs> uh, we hurried across the Waterloo room and I found my father lying dead on the floor. Oh my god. I feel like it's either Albert or there's no accomplice. of the year, am I right? You're right. Thankfully you did it, because if I had done it, the game would have crashed. Dude, do we go for the big risk play? And say he did it alone? Inspector, the case can be closed. Martin Hamish operated alone. He was meticulous in his planning, down to the smallest detail. And yet, we arrived at the truth. Well, I must thank you once again, Mr. Holmes. Without you, it would not have been possible. If pushing a man to his suicide seems fair to you, Lestrade, then we are even. Mr. Holmes, you did what was needed to... To not appear. Am I gonna have a revelation during the cutscene like I did the last case? This 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 opening okay that was too boring for it to be right. We're wrong. Yeah, we're wrong. So it was a mistake by the devs to say the word ran. Unless Albert said ran intentionally to throw us off from him being an accomplice. I want to I want to see I want to see what the other cutscenes are. I feel like I, I it, it can't be her. It has to be Albert as an accomplice. If it, if it's not him alone. There's no way it's her. It's gonna be her. What happened, Inspector? It's all over now, lad. There is no use denying it. We know that you murdered your father. Patricide by plant poisoning. Very alliterative. 
Wha what? You're mad. I didn't do it. I didn't know anything about botany. No. Are you kidding me? It makes no sense how it could be her. Going, we have to go by game logic, remember. It's how the game is telling us. Because us picking this is saying that we're saying she wouldn't have had enough time. That is our reasoning. Not that there's evidence that she was in the laboratory the whole time. The game doesn't care about that. The game cares about would there have been enough time. That is the only reasoning put in place here. All right, but here's the plan, right? We check we we check out this we check out the cutscene. So at that point then that was just a mistake by the developers, right? That was just a, that was just a script mistake. But Holmes how can you be certain that we'll find Miss White here? It is obvious, Watson. Just use your brain. I am using it. I do use it. Now that the rope has tightened around Martin Hamish, Miss White must act to erase all traces of her implication. After the suicide of her accomplice, there is one final trace remaining. The deadly plants of the Divine Syndicate. She will be there. Very good. Shall we go? Just one moment. Now listen to me, Watson. I shall see her alone. You will conceal yourself behind her. Quietly. Whatever are you planning? Nothing spectacular. The impulses of women have always been a mystery to me. But I didn't say that, he did. One, and so we must be cautious. All right. You can count on me, Holmes. Mr. Holmes, good day to you. You do not seem surprised, Miss White. Well, I was expecting you. Not for too long, I believe. So please tell me, as it is still unclear, who planned the murder? Was it you? You were wrong, Mr. Holmes. It was Martin Hamish, then. You managed to convince him to take on a more prominent role. <laughs> you could not be further from the truth. You think that you can fool me? You don't care what I think. It is difficult to care about someone who is capable of pushing a man to his suicide. It is over, Miss White. The police will be here any minute. Over? Perhaps one moment you are here, and the next you were on the other side. The other side? No! Stop! Don't you huff that glue. I beg you not to do this, Miss White. Don't come any closer. Get him! Please remain calm. We can help you. Men, dogs, birds, and plants, not further. women's. Don't try to stop me. Stop this foolishness. Come on, Watson. You have enough time.
We all sniff it now, we all die. GG. Well done, Watson. She was not faking. Miss White, you have no right to take your own life. Dr. Watson? Did you just save me? Or worse? Yeah. Ways piece is completely different. He's protecting her at all times. When he finds out that Holmes is close to the truth, he even kills himself with a letter in his pocket in which he admits to everything. Is he feeling guilty, responsible for he for her, or does he make him does she make him do it? I can't remember what I was thinking then, but would he protect Albert that way? I don't think so. Right, I just wanted to see the other cutscenes, but we're sticking with my original one. I'm a man of integrity. Also, White's voice is kind of hot, so I'm okay with her getting away with it. I got my priorities in check. Inspector, the, he was. Yes, it's still technically fifty percent. <laughs> Probably like what five percent? Zero, zero percent. You wanna know why it's zero percent? Because everyone else changes their answer if they find out they're wrong. Everyone else does that. By the way, if 0% of people got to my conclusion, how can they say 1% of people did my moral choice? Where are you going, Holmes? Have you been invited somewhere? We have been invited, Watson. We have? Where to? To the Baker Street Irregulars annual dinner. They sent us an invitation. It is on the table. A dinner? How could those street urchins afford anything like that? I can't understand um, your interest in the They're dirty. two for twenty at Applebee's. That's how. Wallet. They. Watson, you should be excited. It is a secret dinner. Its location changes every year. Read the menu. Sounds mouthwatering. All right. We, the secret police of Baker Street. Invite you, Sherlock Holmes, and Dr. Watson to our annual dinner. Menu, entree, frozen rat head salad. Is, is this a joke? Not at all. Pray continue. Main course, sow's udder in Danny Nutcracker's way. Ah, oh, sounds disgusting, Holmes. Hedgehog goulash. Ooh, okay, Steve gotta go fast. In homemade juice, and it goes on. Ah, I can hear them on the stairs now. Oh, we can't go there. We can't eat that. Watson, you'll hurt the feelings of those poor children. We have to go. Oh, Mr. Holmes. It is fine, Mrs. Hudson. Mr. Holmes. Wiggins, Dr. Watson is getting ready. He will be delighted to join us. You don't look well, my young man. Is there something wrong? Don't tell me the dinner is cancelled. Mr. Holmes, it's, it's my brother people. Leighton. He's in a prison cell. They say he's killed two men. You have to help us, Mr. Holmes, because I know he didn't do it. Where is he now? From what I've heard, they took him to the yard, and they gave him a good beating already. You know what they're like. They'll hang him. They won't look any further. Holmes, we have to help him. Well, and forget about the dinner. Wiggins, I'll take the case. You're fantastic, Mr. Holmes. I'll be waiting for you at the crime scene. I'll get half of them out of jail, don't worry. It's on Half Moon Street in Whitechapel. Very well. Dude, White Castle? Fuck yeah. How many cases are left?
Wait, so this is the last case. Alright, so what was that game again? Your turn to die. Is it on Steam? Or is it on console? Or is it on some other service? Yeah, you're still going strong with the Reckies, dude. It's free from a translated website? Oh. Uh, this one? <laughs> Yeah, we're on the, we're on the right site then. Your turn to die. G Death game by majority. Kimiga Shine is a freeware negotiation horror adventure game by made in RPG Maker. Currently, it goes up to Chapter 3, Part 1, Section A. It will be released a part at a time. Is there a way to download it as like a... It's like an application on your computer, or could, or do you have to play it in browser? Dude, Chihiro's here. And <laughs> Nakamura. <laughs> Hell, yeah, dude, Ibuki is here. There's an app and a browser here? I can't find the app. <laughs> Chrome may falsely fly us down those malicious, but hey, don't worry, it's safe to ignore. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> I can't find like a, a game download. Is is it is it just this? Oh, sorry. I was I was reading it as in like you were downloading only chapter three. I'm sorry. Sorry, my bad. That's just that's me being stupid. So when was the last update? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> they don't do a good job making it look safe. Is this stream safe? Yeah, I, I see. Is the game stream safe though? It's not like too, it's not, it's not like too much. Uh, many depictions of death will be will, with blood and some gore. People dying of all kinds of death traps. Suicide, uh, that's fine. Characters dealing with death-related trauma, that's fine. Hallucinations from trauma, that's fine. Implied abusive relationships, that's fine. A few moments involving a character being stalked, that's fine. An optional and easily avoidable bad ending involving mind break. What the fuck is that? Some elements of body horror and some pseudo jump scares and swearing. Okay. As long as, you know, it, it, it sounds like it's no worse than, like, Doki Doki, right? So, I think we're fine.
All right. Um. Yeah. Is it is it is it a game on Twitch that I can apply it as? Why the fuck is it auto playing Twitch recommendations? That should never happen. Also, racial slurs everywhere. Also, racial. Slurs oh my god, I'm trying to pull up my fucking Twitch account, but it's oh like, god, I'm trying there we go. Oh my god, why is it auto playing streams? That's so annoying. Right. Um. All right. There you go. You go to the about tab. It's there now. At the bottom of the list, like right now, I'm. To be fair, this list doesn't go in order of like my plan to play, but it's there now. That way, I don't forget. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a fun game to stream. I mean, you know, it's nothing worse than something I've already streamed before. Yeah, dude, I'm 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 on it. I like this little update I did. I should probably include. Uh. Not in order. I think if people I think if people see it they they're going to interpret it as me saying that this is the order I'm going to be playing these games in and it's absolutely not. I I should make it look prettier but we're fine with how it is right now I guess. Yeah, so I guess um Gotcha. Uh you know, it, it, yeah, don't worry. I've already got that. I'm already, I'm already, I'm already brainstorming. Um, I, you know, it, it'll probably have more updates out by the time we get to it because we're gonna, we're gonna start playing. We're gonna get back into Persona Four Golden after this game, and we're gonna beat that game, which will probably take a few days. I really, really, really want to play Last of Us Grounded Mode again. Well, I'm gonna, I want to play New Game Plus Grounded Mode. Because if I can beat the game in grounded mode on New Game Plus, I will get, I will have, I will have earned all the achievements for um for Last of Us. Well, the, all the trophies. Uh, oh, that's good. Definitely, that's it's long, it's good that they're involved. Yeah, what else have they made apart? Have they made anything else apart from Sherlock? Well, they seem to really like Sherlock. Um, top seller. The Devil's Do well, What's the uh, mostly positive? Very positive. Mostly, mostly. Mixed. Bro, we're halfway through 2021. You have to have a month and date at this point. Ah, uh, this poor one. Oh, it's just a soundtrack. If we do play another one, it'll probably be like this one at some point, maybe. Which one? What, what, what did this come out? 2014. Oh, wow. This This game is fucking seven years old. Yo, it's Wiggins. He's in the he's in the trailer and everything. Interesting. <laughs> it's a very different looking Sherlock. He looks much uh 
Uh, assuming that Sherlock. What is this, Assassin's Creed Unity? Look at this shit. Looks like Unity. Yo, they, why'd they make Sherlock hot? <laughs> God, this like constantly moving previous option is, is cursed. Interesting. I mean, look at him. <laughs> look at that handsome man. <laughs> look at those eyes, dude. <laughs> oh, that's right. I have to do the I have to do the Lord's work real quick. There we go. All set. Yeah, dude, no kidding. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll be back at the same time tomorrow. It's just going to be, it's, we're going to have like, I think six, three hour streams in a row. Cause I'm working overtime this week. So they got, they got me like six days in a row. Looks a little funky to you. Yeah. Oh, I think we'll probably beat this tonight. Assuming, assuming that, the, assuming that the final sixth case is another three-hour one, um, then uh, you know, then we'll be done tomorrow, and then we'll get into, uh, we'll get back into this, we'll beat it, and then we'll do something. <laughs> I don't know what, but we will do something. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. Um, yeah, later. Bye-bye.